Texas Tech Red Raiders. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Lucas. I'll be joined by Norm Hitzkus for this battle. The first home appearance for the Aggies this year after three road losses, while Texas Tech comes in with one game up in the conference standings following their win last week over Baylor. Tech, however, is only one and two. But one thing about Tech, they'll score points, 29 points at least in every game this year. And as for offense, the Aggies seem to have found theirs as well. But starting Norm Hitzkus with the visitors, Billy Joe Tolliver is a name that almost sounds like uh, he's been around in the Southwest Conference forever, and his record book will show that. He's got a few of them. He leads the offensive charge for this uh, Tech team. Formerly one of the real wild men in college football, a motorcyclist, legendary off-field pursuits, but he got married. He's settled down. He's now a daddy, and his passing shows it. He's hit at least 50% three weeks in a row. And, Greg, be ready early. His first pass against North Texas, a touchdown. His first pass against Arizona, a touchdown. His second pass against Baylor, a touchdown. Watch out his first pass. Don't go to the uh, refrigerator for that one. <laughs> now, his big receivers, of course, are noted as the Smurfs, the little guys, but they've got a great fullback who is uh, perhaps unheralded more than he should be. He's been recognized by the Sporting News anyway, and we're talking about Irvin Ferris, who can run and also can catch. One of the very best-kept secrets in all of college football. This guy's going to finish his college career with over 1,500 yards rushing and over 1,000 receiving. He leads them in yards gained per rush and in receptions. He is something to watch, certainly because he can do it all. Now, on the other side of the football, the Aggies, we know, have a great defense. That's been highly touted. The offense has been somewhat suspect, but if you look past the score last week and looked at the numbers, Chris Osgood, the quarterback, led a pretty good offense last week against Oklahoma State. Good balanced quarterback, capable of running the option and threatening you with the run, capable of throwing the ball. He threw for nearly 200 yards last week. I really believe having done that game, the Aggies found their offense last week, though, as you said, the score does not show it. Now, one reason that uh, the offense looked good was the return of a couple of very key performers. Darren Lewis is one, and the other, of course, is the wide receiver uh, who does such a great job. Uh, you know, they're great. I mean, this team has a great wide threat, and also they've got the running attack, and, of course, with Osgood throwing the ball. Lewis is an exceptional runner, uh, capable of 200 yards on a given day. Harris is an exceptional wide receiver. The two game breakers, if these two are bottled up, Tech stands a wonderful chance today. Now, the emotional factor of this game cannot be discounted, Norm. No. The Yankees are home for the first time, and everyone knows what the emotional factor here is at Kyle Field at any time. Well, Tech sticks its head in the lion's mouth today. This club is incredibly hungry to win. They're home for the first time. They have revenge from last year. Tech's off a huge win. Aggies off an embarrassing loss. Emotion's a big part of this game, and emotionally, the signs point to A&M. Now, we won't discount emotion, but we'll get a little more technical when we ask you, what do you think the keys to win are. Let's start with the visitor, Texas Tech. they got to pick up the blitzes. The Aggies are going to come at Tolliver, who's not terribly mobile with their linebackers. They've got to shut down those big play people, Lewis and Harris, who can blow you out of the game quickly. And with this crowd, and as hungry as they are, Tech's got to establish early momentum. On the AM side, they got to start pressuring a quarterback. They've only got three sacks in three games. That's unbelievable. they got to stop making huge mistakes. Twelve turnovers in three games for AM. And they got to get the crowd into this game early and establish that momentum they desperately need that's been lacking. A huge game for the Aggies in conference play, and certainly Tech could come out of this 2-0. They'd be in a driver's seat in the Southwest Conference. You stay with us. We'll have the kickoff and all the action from Kyle Field coming up in just a moment. Playing Greg Lucas along with Norm Hitzkus. We're at Kyle Field getting set to start this one. The long-awaited home opener for the Aggies after three games on the road. One at in the Meadowlands, not neutral field, two on the road, and of course the Alabama game, which was supposed to be here, but got weathered out, so to speak. The Aggies started practice 60 days ago today on this field and finally get to play a game on this field. And it's not coming any too soon for the Aggies. They have the tough start, although last week's 52-15 to score was not indicative indicative of the type of offense they had rolling. Spike Dykes, the head coach at Texas Tech, a little different spelling of his name, but hey, he's the uh, he is the the good time guy, but yet a serious football coach. He's got a great deal of experience, not as a head coach on the college level, but he's certainly being from the Lubbock area, a very popular fellow up there. 
Well, one of the problems that's always plagued Texas Tech is getting somebody to come coach there who wants to stay there, whose job ideal is to be the head coach at Texas Tech. And Dykes is a West Texas guy, loves it there. Yeah, he's out of Stephen F. Austin. You saw that sign, home of the 12th man. That's new in Kyle Field this year as the weather conditions are being checked. 78 degrees at game time, wind out of the southwest, gusting from 5 to 10 miles an hour, 69% chance of or 69% humidity and only a 40% chance of rain. That sign, as we were talking about, welcome to Aggieland, home of the 12th man, a gift of the class of 1988. And, of course, the fans here at Aggieland represent the 12th man. The referee, Joe Thomas, Bill Anger, Don Brown, Bobby Brooks, Bill Brown, John Lewis, and Jim Evans, his staff from the Southwest Conference as we get set to get play underway. Jackie Sherrill, the coach of the Aggies out of Alabama, 98-43-2 in, in his 13th year, 45-26-1 in, in his seventh season at A&M. But he's had more trouble with Texas Tech than any other school. He's 2-4 and four against them. And immediately, as A&M kicks off here, you will see one of the best run-back men in the country, the smallest man in major college football, Tyrone Thurman, 5'3 and 135 pounds. And that's after breakfast. <laughs> he is he is quick. He better be. When hey. you're 5'3", 135, you better be quick. <laughs> Kicking off Lane Tuppet. And the ball will come deep into the end zone where it will not be returned. And it will be first and ten. Let's take a look at the starting lineup now. First on the offense for Texas Tech, the offensive backs and receivers. Of course, Billy Joe Tolliver. This is an outstanding group of skill position players. Maybe the best group of skill position players in this conference. One of the best in the country. Gray rushed for over 1,000 yards last year as a sophomore. On the offensive line. Odie Orn is the only returning starter. This is the concern area on the Tech team. Billy Joe Tolliver on the give, and the first carry is to James Gray, and Gray cuts outside for about nine or ten yards as Gary Jones comes up from his strong safety spot to make the tackle. It will be just short of a first down, second and less than one. The defensive line for AM has been somewhat of a disappointment in ways this year. Yeah, they play a 3-4, and none of these three people have a sack yet this season. Price very active, the cousin of Auburn All-American Tracy Rocker. We'll take a look at the linebackers in a moment on this second down and short. Again, Gray, and Gray has him up for the first down just barely. He needed to get to the 30, and he just crossed it. It'll be a first down. John Roper came in from the linebacker spot, and there you see John and his fellow linebackers highly heralded by Aggie fans, but uh, again, they need to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, this is supposedly the best part of this defense, but Roper, who had 15 sacks last year, has none through three games this year. And Roper, who led the team in tackles last year, is just fifth in tackles on the team this year. There's Tolliver. He's got Thurman and Anderson wide on a first down play. Tolliver's first throwing attempt. Looks out to the right side. It's overthrown. Intended for Ferris. He threw it just a little bit high. It'll be second down and 10. Alex Morris was nearby, but the pass was too high. Here's an Aggie secondary that's really going to get worked on today. Morris, a solid veteran starter. Mickey Washington at the corners. Gary Jones, you'll see, playing with a soft cast on a fractured hand. And one of the indications this defense has had some trouble. William Thomas, the free safety, Greg, he's second on the team in tackles. That's not good. That means the ball's getting pretty well downfield before the tackle's made. Bryce and Thurman are wide. Ferris in motion. A little flip pass is behind Price and incomplete. It'll be third down and 10. The Tolliver's 0-2, Mickey Washington right there. The Aggies came with a max blitz there. Tolliver read it beautifully. He had one-on-one -on, -one on the corner and just lobbed the ball up. But Mickey Washington was glued to the receiver, and it forces the first third and long for Tech today. These are the plays that will decide this game. Can Tech, with their attack, convert the third and longs they get into? Tolliver certainly is capable as the play was sent in from the sideline. Deep drop on the screen pass, out of bounds, overthrown, intended for Ferris. He had nowhere to run anyway, and so the Aggie defense holds, and it will be punt time. 
Well, the Aggie fans certainly must be viewing this first series with a bit of relief. By the time their offense took the field last week, they were behind 14 to nothing. Jamie Simmons will punt. There you see Rod Harris back to return this kick. Simmons gets it high, and Harris calls for the fair catch, roaming over near the 25 to the 26-yard line, where the Aggies will have the ball for the first time on their own 26. And we'll take a look at the Aggie defensive or offensive lineup as Simmons gets a good first punt up. On the offensive lineup, Osgood draws the start, and of course with Lewis and Harris back, that helps him a lot. Robert Wilson is a pure freshman, one of the 100 best recruits in the country last year, according to a lot of services. And the Juco transfer tight end, Mike Jones, is second on ke in catches on the club. The offensive line, Pat Cunningham, draws the start for a reason that is yes, different. Yes, L.B. Moon, who started at left tackle, suspended three games by the conference for steroid use. Cunningham and Jones, by the way, were Juco All-Americans at the same junior college, Sacramento Community College. Here's Osgood, who is... A junior transfer from Ole Miss in his second start. And Lewis gets nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Derryberry and Terry Lynch in on the tackle. The linebacker and defensive end. Derryberry, mm -hmm. one of two returning linebackers. Total on the team. Period, yeah. The Ed defensive line for Texas Tech, they play a 4-3. Mathis Meyer had a huge game last week. He and Lynch are former walk-ons, but the stumpy Desmond Royal may be the best player in that unit. Second down, 10. Little screen pass in 10 over Lewis, too low, incomplete. And it is third down. Let's take a look at the defensive backs now for A&M. Linebackers first. We talked about Derry Berry. Mosley is a story as well. He's a military veteran. Yes, he is. Spent three years in Europe playing football. He's the number one sack man. Derry Berry is the number one tackle. And in the defensive backfield, Merv Skir Skirlark is in his sixth year at Tech. The rest of the team calls him Grandpa. He's 24 years old. Third and long. It is a loose ball, and I believe the Aggies got the ball in time, but it will be fourth down. They'll have to kick it. Terry Lynch got to it and knocked it down, and I would have to say the Aggies were fortunate. <laughs> Let's take a look at this, Norm. Credit this sack to the defensive secondary because that's a long way to come around for Texas Tech. When you have to come all the way around as Lynch did, your line's done a good job, but everybody was covered by the secondary. So putting... Sean Wilson, and it's looked like it may have been deflected slightly. It was certainly off the side of the foot. Goes out of bounds at about the 40. He doesn't get really bad distance when you add it all up. No, in fact, it turns out to be <laughs> a darn good one. It's yeah, a little over 40 yards without a run back. That's right. So he'll take it, both numerically and where it put the football with no return. The Texas Tech Red Raiders have the ball for the second time. There's a quick look at Sean Wilson, of course, the son of Gerald. But in football games, they're like wars. They're a matter of ground possession. Texas Tech punted from their 30. They get it back at their 40. So just in the field position war, they've already picked up 10 yards in the ball back. That's a good point. That also is uh, indicative of how important defense is because defense has actually given the offense 20 yards. Thomas, or, or Thurman rather, in motion. Play action. Tolliver being chased, and Wallace gets him on a sack back inside the 30-yard line. Aaron Wallace out of Dallas Roosevelt was on Tolliver like a blanket. Remember the keys to winning we talked about in the open. A, Tech must pick up blitzes, and B, A&M's got to start putting more pressure on quarterbacks. And look at Wallace. You know, Greg, in a foot race, Wallace may be faster than either of the starting Tech runners. He's quick, and of course, Travis Price and Rodney Blackshear come out wide for Tech on this second down and about 21. Little give inside Ferris, nowhere to go. Roper, he gets around Roper, but picks up four or five yards. Still not much of a gain. Alex Morris on the tackle, running him out of bounds. Roper put the pressure on early. It will be a third down play in about 15. Yeah, Roper's not going to get the tackle there, but it was Roper who stayed home and fought the deception of the play and enabled Morris to make the tackle. Very good play by John Roper, not getting sucked in by the flow left away from him. 
Coming out wide to the top of the screen, Eddie Anderson. Wide to the near side, Rodney Blackshear. And Thurman is on the flank left side. Ferris in motion. The pitch back to Gray. Gray on the sweep right. Just gets up to the line of scrimmage. Maybe one more yard, and that is all. It's going to be time to kick it away again. Interesting calls by Tech on second and 22 and third and 20. They go with running plays to the right. Harris will be in to take this punt. And again, it's a high, deep punt. Back to the five, six-yard line. Harris has it. He gets one block, a second block, and he's pinched off at the 11-yard line. Coming through to make that tack, uh, tackle was number 99, Joe McBride, for the Red Raiders. Boy, Harris had a tough decision there, didn't he? Because it was right around the five-yard line, and if you let it hit, there's no assurance the ball's going to go in the end zone. But if you catch it, and you don't have much in the way of blocking as he didn't, you know you're going to get swallowed up. Aggies start deep in their own territory. Turned it approximately 11 yards or so, or 10 yards up to the 16 where it's first down. Harris wide left. Inside him is Gary Oliver at the top of the screen. He's in the flank. Single running back lined up is Robert Wilson. And now back in the eye is Lewis. The give to Lewis. Off tackle, landing left side. Good block across the 20. Cutting back to the 23-yard line. Lewis. Donald Harris, the free safety out of Waco, made the tackle. Donald Harris is one fine football player. He's a sophomore. He was defensive newcomer of the year last year in 1987. And against Arizona this year, Harris set a school record, 30 tackles. Wow. Good, good run inside by Lewis, changing direction as he has a second down and two as we get back to live action. Again, the give. Lewis has the first down as he struggles across the 25 to the 27 or 8-yard line. Terry Lynch, Mike Derryberry in on that play. With Moon out of the left tackle spot, I think you can assume the Aggies, when they go to the ground and want yardage, are going to go over their horse. And that's Jerry Fontenot at right guard. The guy he blocks on, Desmond Royal, openly admits that Fontenot's the very best player he's played against in college football. Nose up. Fontenot, a three-year letterman senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. First down and 10, the ball at the 28. Again, Lewis. And Lewis crashes forward to the 32. And again, right side. The Aggies keep working the right side. Harris and Lynch teaming up on that tackle. Tell you what, in football, it can be a very simple game. If you find something, you keep working it. Watch the block by Wilson out ahead. Nice block by the freshman. And the Aggies right now, for three times in a row, have run right side, and they've been rewarded with 18 yards in three plays. Second down and just under five. Ball on the 34. This time it is Wilson, and Wilson crashes forward for the first down across the 40, down to about the 45-yard line. Donald Harris making the tackle, but it's another Aggie first down. Guess where they went again, Greg? Right side, right over Fontenot again. You know, football can be so simple at times we were talking about until Texas Tech shuts that play off. The Aggies will just keep running the ball there, one would suspect. Mike Jones and Brian Ross both in. Double tight ends with one wide receiver out left. That's Gary Oliver. The eye formation, possibly a play change at the line of scrimmage as Osgood signals his eye back. This time they go left side as much as Darren Lewis is brought down by Derryberry. Lewis, it seems like, has carried the ball a lot early, and he has, but he carried the ball 25 times last week against Oklahoma State, 168 yards, and that was the uh, second best uh, effort that he has had. His career best is 194 yards against TCU last year. It will be second down and seven. Rod Harris is back in wide to the bottom of the screen. Again, the I formation play action looks to Harris got him complete to the 35 yard line Harris brought down by Boyd Cowan and Donald Harris but another Aggie first down let's go back to the simplicity of football 
you run the right side, you run the right side, you run the right side, you run the right side. The, the left side linebackers have to fill against the run so the turn in for the wide receiver has nobody in front of him to cut the ball off. Harris just runs a little turn in behind the linebacker. Bingo, first down. Desmond Royal leaves the lineup on the offensive or the defensive line for Tech. Shane Garrett is now in wide at one of the wideout spots for the Aggies. The give to Lewis, and he runs into a lot of resistance. I think Maybe a yard gain. Charles Perry was one of those resisting. This game's breaking down here right and left for the Aggies. They make yardage running and throwing right. They've had a much tougher time running left. Second down and eight. Tell you what, the offensive coordinator, Joe Avizano and Jackie Sherrill, on this drive have done a really good job of staying basic to what they believe works. Mike Jones, Gary Oliver, Rod Harris. But the give goes to Lewis. He changes direction, spins back to the center of the field, and he has a first down. Wow. He needed to get to the 26, and he just did, and that was a lot of individual skills and efforts by Lewis. Greg, let me ask you something about last year's A&M team. Is this starting to look more like it? Power football, ram it down your mouth, nothing fancy type football? Good ball control, too. That's right. Osgood gives them the skills to throw in the occasional pass. Last year, of course, they had a passing quarterback. Well, actually, they, they had Stump, and they had the other two, but they didn't have one package. Stump was the closest they had to a total package, and Osgood may be able to be that package. Play action. He's got Harris streaking left. Right Touchdown. side. Up the middle. Knocked Ooh. away. Good defensive play by Donald Harris. Has he got a hand on it? It was intended for the tight end going up the middle. And I believe was uh, Mike Jones. And it will be fourth down at about a foot. Crowd says go for it. It appears they will. Boy, this is a fantastic play by Harris. Look at him recovering. He realizes he's beaten if Osgood floats the ball a little more. That was Wally Hartley, 92, not 82, that it was intended for. They're going on fourth down. Right side, where they've gotten all the yardage already behind Fontenot. They're strong to the right, so they go left. They got the first down and more. Robert Wilson, the freshman from Houston Worthing, finally stopped by Harrison Cowan, but it's a first down for the Aggies. Most people regarded Robert Wilson as one of the top 100 recruits in the nation as he came out of Worthing in his senior year alone. And now we're talking about top-notch football, 17 touchdowns and over 1,400 yards rushing. Extra tight end now as Harris leaves the lineup and Wally Hartley is in. Wide man is Oliver. So Mike Jones and Hartley both in the lineup. Mike Jones is wide top of the screen. Everyone else in tight. Lewis. This time cut down, not much of a game. James Mosley, Jeff Carter. Tell you what, you have to say this about Tech. They're making the Aggies snap the ball an awful lot of times on this drive. And the theory is, the longer you string the drive out, the more chance there is the offense will do something, turn it over, commit a penalty, something to stop themselves. That, of course, has been a problem that the Aggies had, as you well saw last week against Oklahoma State. A lot of yards but only 15 points. Second down and eight. To the left corner. Oh, intercepted. Picked off by Boyd Cowan as he tries to cut outside, and that was right there. He did not see Boyd Cowan just playing center field. He, he saw a receiver, I believe it, Gary Oliver, who was streaking to the end zone, but Cowan was just sitting and waiting. Osgood, you're right, never sees them. There's no reason he shouldn't have seen them. Cowan was standing right there. He just throws the ball right to Boyd Cowan. Well, there's the turnover you're talking about, Norm. The statistics are going to show the Aggies have a lot of yards. No points yet. Well, that was the story last week. Aggies outgained Oklahoma State, got beat 37 points because of their own major huge mistakes. Another of the must-to-winning we had earlier on. If there is a bright spot on a turnover of that nature, it is that at least it did not give the other team points directly. It gave them the ball, possibly cut the Aggies off, but it's on the 15-yard line as Tolliver gives it inside. He's not going to get much yardage there, just a couple of yards. That was Gray and Terry Price, the right defensive end, whose cousin Terry Rockers, an All-American defensive tackle at Auburn. There you see some instructions for the 
QB, like, don't throw the ball there like that anymore, Mr. Osgood. I think what was being gestured to him was, don't lock in on your receiver. Look at the area that the man's supposed to go into, not the receiver as he runs. Second down, and we'll call it eight. Overthrown. Tolliver has not been on target. He threw the ball high. Aaron Wallace was put a little bit of pressure on. But the pass was overthrown, intended for Ferris, and it will be a third down and eight. Billy Joe Tolliver has hit at least 50% of his passes three straight games. Realize that in his 24 previous starts in college football, he's only hit 50% of his passes seven times before this year. He, he really has matured. He's always thrown the ball a lot. He's always had big yardage totals because... Yeah, it throws low percentage passes, too. Sometimes forces them. Thurman in motion. He's got a man. Complete first down across the 30-yard line. A struggle forward. William Top Ball loose. And the Aggies have it. I think. Let's see what the officials are going to decide. Yes, sir. Aggies have the football as it was coughed up by Texas Tech. After the reception by Anthony McDowell, he lost it. Alex Morris finally got the football with a good tackle, but Anthony McDowell dropped the football. And before we put the ball in play, heading the other direction on the exchange of turnovers, we'll be back. No score. Tech and AM at Kyle Field. Before Morris could recover, and now the Aggies have it right back, and there's Lewis. And Lewis gets up to the 36-yard line. Tom Mathesmeyer making the hit along with Mike Derryberry. Washington and Morris appear to be the two guys that create this. It's the second hit there from Washington that shakes it loose. And then William Thomas all the way over by the boundary. You know, that's a good job of recovering the ball because if he doesn't have possession as it goes out of bounds, that's still Tech's ball. Second down and five on the gain by Lewis. And he'll try it again. That's not Lewis. That's uh, Randy Simmons into the lineup, and Simmons has the first down to about the 28-yard line. Mike Derryberry and Donald Harris again in on the tackle. Simmons is out of McKinney, a freshman redshirt. Craig, if AM is able to continue running the ball like this, the eventual big play in the game may be a pass because Tech is having to commit more and more people to fortify their run defense to stop the Aggies. High formation, again with a first down. That was good. But oh. one ball and recovered, I think, by the Aggies. We'll wait and see. There was a mix-up there. When Osgood turned around, I think they got the snap count confused. It'll be second down, a loss on the play of about a yard. Well, the Aggies just keep doing things to shoot themselves in the foot, but realize if you're a Tech fan right now, you're saying to yourself, Nobody dominates 60 minutes. The Aggies are not creating points with the period of their domination in this game. Two tight ends came out of the lineup, so wide outs. Mike Jones, the one tight end with Rod Harris and Gary Oliver. And again, it may have been, a, oh, a save. Pitch to Lewis. And Lewis gets to the 20-yard line. He's about a yard short of a first down. Wow, did he save an errant pitch. Good hands. John Elliott, the left end on defense, making the tackle. Look at his pitch. The play gets messed up here in the mesh. That's the fake handoff to Simmons. Osgood gets all out of time. And Osgood right now should thank his lucky stars that Darren Lewis has fabulous hands. Watch the bump with the fullback there. See it? Lewis already has 47 yards on wow. 10 carries. And that uh, little bit of running was all his. Third down and one. Fullback left side is what they ran here last time. Fullback left side. And a first down and more. Robert Wilson with power down to the 11-yard line. Merv Skurlock, right left cornerback, making the tackle. The Aggies with their second threat. So far, turnovers have been the story, one for each team. But the difference being when Tech turned it back over, the Aggies already had it on their side of the 50. Double tight end, Jones and Ross. Check off by Osgood, it appears. There's Lewis on the sweep left. He's got room at the corner. Lewis to the five, three-yard line. He's run out of bounds by Cowan and Harris. 
the safeties teaming up. Good block by Randy Simmons to help spring him for that extra yardage. And now it will be down to the two-yard line. Yeah, very close to a first down. It looks like he's just a little bit short. Yeah, that's Tech's problem here is that they can make a good defensive play, but if A&M gains another couple of feet, they'll have a no whole new set of downs in this situation. Short yardage quarterback Bucky Richardson is into the lineup, along with Robert Wilson and Larry Horton. So this is the power backfield. Oh. Ball on the two. Touchdown, Wilson. But there's a flag thrown on the pile after the touchdown, more than likely some form of unsportsmanlike conduct, and I'm sure the score is going to stand. But it will matter from a kickoff standpoint. We'll see about the official signal on this. Here it is. Dead ball. Personal foul. Ooh. And it That'll be assessed on the kickoff now, so the Aggies will kick off from midfield against AM or against the Tech. Here's the extra point attempt by Scott Slater. Richardson will hold and he'll try to make it seven to nothing as they shift over. Kick is up. He got it, so with just 31 seconds left to go in period one, timeout on the field, the Aggies seven, Texas Tech nothing. Let me, let me give that to Norm. You want to collect those? Since we have them on sheets, you can just collect them and we'll have them all. This will be the Aggies' 12th man squad covering the kick. And I'm telling you, Greg, a lot of coaches have talked about what to do in this situation. Do you kick high and short, realizing the, the run back man's going to be very nervous fielding the ball here? Also, a lot of run back men don't realize you can fair catch a kickoff. There you saw the drive, seven plays, 41 yards, 335, as the ball is kicked off, and there will be no run back here. Oh. Sometimes uh, Slater, let's see, was Slater, no, that wasn't Slater again, that was, uh, that was Talbot. Sometimes Talbot takes all the fun out of it, <laughs> as far as the 12th men are concerned, by just kicking it through the end zone. <laughs> they don't have a chance. Now let's go to the Tech side of the ball here. Tech has really established nothing offensively. They haven't established that they can run or throw. The idea for Tech now is start to move the football by whatever means. Maybe dump the ball to Ferris, who's a good back out of the backfield. Maybe try to establish the ball up the middle. But you've got to start establishing that you can do something against the defense. 31 seconds left in the quarter. 7 to nothing. a and m Eddie Anderson and Wayne Walker are wide and now Tyrone Thurman who moves in motion. The give goes inside to the running back. Adam Bob making the stop and Washington down there in the bottom of the pile. Not much of a gain there for Clifton Winston. Tolliver the quarterback. Well, actually better than we thought. We'd take a look down there. He got almost five yards. Winston, who carried the ball for the first time in the game, is a little spark plug. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. So Billy Joe Tolliver will take his team all the way to the other end of the field, facing a 7 to nothing deficit. One quarter is in the can. We'll be back with second quarter action from Kyle Field with a score, Texas A&M 7, Texas Tech nothing. As we get set to start the second quarter, it has been a strong ground attack for the most part for the Aggies. Lewis with 57 yards carrying uh, on 11 rushes and Wilson 29 yards on four carries, 97 yards in the first quarter for the Aggies. And now it's up to Billy Joe Tolliver who has been primarily trying to get his team moving through the air to see if he can. Some of it, his difficulty has been caused by the defense, but a lot of it's been caused by passes just not on target. Gray and McDowell now the two backs and there's a pitch. 
Gray, and Gray runs out of bounds, and he has the first down, but a flag has been thrown. A pair of them thrown where you would think it's some kind of offense in the blocking. It could be a clip, could be a hold, but that's the general area that the flags have been thrown in. See referee Joe Thomas's signal here. It is a clip. It is a clip. And, oh my, this is going to stick Tech way back in the hole. It'll put them inside their own 15-yard line. See if you can pick it up, Greg. Yeah, we'll see if the shot is wide enough. Maybe not. I think we're a little, it's probably happened there, but we, we couldn't see, of course, the man that it happened to. In the meantime, we saw Gray do a good job of running. Offense, <laughs> real second down. But he had help that he wasn't supposed to get. And Greg, just the thing Tech didn't need is happening again in a series where they badly needed to answer the Aggies to indicate to them they could take the ball and move it back down the field. They're now faced with having to throw the ball in a very dangerous area of the football field. The other thing that's bad about that for Spike Dykes Club is the fact that they ran it well. They gained good yardage. They need to have that balance to really open up that passing game. But now it's look at second down 19. Thurman in motion. Fake draw. Draw given. And a good game by Gray again. Uh, not enough for the first down. Aaron Wallace and Mickey Washington teaming on the on the tackle. But actually a good, uh, a good gain considering it got him up to about a second down now in 07. So they gained about 12. This is the 1986 Offensive Newcomer of the Year in the Southwest Conference. Gray gained over 1,000 yards last year. And early in his junior year, given good health, he's a cinch to be the all-time tech leading rusher when he graduates. He only needs about another 900 yards to get it. He might get it this year. Travis Price, Tyrone Thurman on the bottom of the screen. Roper. And Roper with the sack of Tolliver to the 11. That was going to be too slow a developing play, and it will be time for the Raid Raiders to kick it away. Well, we've been waiting for John Roper to show up this season. Teams have been running away from him. He didn't get to any quarterback so far. And tonight, today, Aaron Wallace and Roper, who build themselves the Blitz brothers, have each gotten a sack. Jamie Simmons with the punt. And that's a good one. Harris takes it on the 28. Runs into his own teammates, but bounces off. Still on his feet across to the 43-yard line. And we saw Lewis Sheffield among those in on the play. And uh, Joe McBride again. McBride, a star on special teams. For Greg, Tech. Greg, let's go back to the musts for each team at the start of the telecast. Remember we talked about Tech must establish some early momentum. And A&M must get the crowd involved early. Well, of those two, it's the Aggies who've accomplished their early must. And they're leading on the scoreboard 7 to nothing with 14 minutes and 4 seconds remaining. And Aggie backer, Darren Lewis and Randy Simmons. The backfield going out wide to the top of the screen is Felton Ransby. And Rod Harris is low. First down. Play action. The throw out to Lewis, and there was some contact before the ball was thrown, but not enough to draw the flag. It'll be second down and 10. Mosley put some pressure on. James Mosley is an interesting story. You mentioned it a little bit earlier as we take a look at the replay, Norm. Military man for three years. Yes, indeed. Played in Europe. He played for Spike Dykes in high school. Went over to Europe, played ball over there. He's 26 years old. Three-year letterman senior. Rod Harris. Again, wide to the bottom of the screen with double receivers to the top. On the draw play, Lewis slips and falls. He tries to cut back to the left. And it will be a third down and long. John Elliott was in the vicinity, although actually Lewis helped tackle himself. Do you, uh, do you know what Mosley's job was when stationed at the Royal Air Force Base Bent Waters, England? Oh, it was something to do with nuclear weapons, wasn't he, it? He was in charge of arming and disarming <laughs> nuclear weapons and rockets on planes. So Southwest Conference football is nothing. Well, he, he's come to another place where he's trying to prevent the bomb. <laughs> That's true. Third down and nine. No bomb and a struggle forward. Osgood short of the first down. It'll be fourth down at about four. 
at midfield. Charles Perry, the Iowa Park Jr. Iowa Park near Wichita Falls, Texas, and it will be a punt coming up. With the Aggie defense playing this well, now they want to turn it over to Wilson to see if they can back them up. The Aggie's trying to hustle a 12th man off the field, and they get him off. Tyrone Thurman is back. Uh-oh, fake. fake. Richardson, he's got the first down. Well, a gambling play that paid off. The Aggies set that up so spectacularly. It looked like a normal punt, then Richardson simply shifts over center and runs the option. You get a feeling we're watching a team that feels it has momentum? They certainly are being opportunistic. In the first quarter, the Aggies controlled the ball. 10 minutes and 33 seconds to only 427 for mm. Tech. Mm -mm. And took a 7-0 lead. Double tight ends Ross and Jones in the lineup. With Gary Oliver wide, the only wide out to the bottom of the screen. Uh-oh, mix up. And a quarterback Osgood falls on it. Well, that's that's three mistakes. Only one has been lost, but uh, they've had some problems again here. It's second down and ten. Osgood last week at the four-yard line of Oklahoma State fumbled a snap and lost it. They've had a lot of trouble handling the snaps with Osgood over the last couple of weeks. We have 10, uh, 12 minutes exactly remaining in the first half. Texas A&M seven. Texas Tech nothing. Ross, Jones, and Lewis, and Ransby. Ransby is uh, out back. Fake give and the give finally to Lewis as he gets across to the 40-yard line. The sleight of hand by Chris Osgood. Charles Perry and also uh, in on that play. Charles Perry is a tackle along with James Mosley. Rod Harris now. Perry is a guy who's just coming back to fitness. He blew out his knee in 1986. He was projected as a starter then. Had to lay out the whole year. Then the 87 season, he spent rehabbing it and getting his faith back in the knee. He's getting back to where he used to be, which is a good, solid defensive line. Harris wide right, wide left Oliver, Darren Lewis, and Randy Simmons the backs, and a whistle. Timeout called by Texas A&M. They weren't quite organized, so we'll get organized and take a break. With 11 minutes and 9 seconds, Seconds to go in the first half. It's Texas A&M 7, Texas Tech nothing, and we'll be back. With 11 minutes and 9 seconds to go, Texas A&M leading Texas Tech 7 to nothing in the league opener for the Aggies and the second conference game for Tech. Tech winning the opener in conference last week against Baylor 36-6. This is an interesting series, Norm, this series, the Texas Tech A&M series, because Tech actually has the edge in uh, since they've been playing both in the conference. A&M has the overall advantage. And, you know, the strange thing is Tech has the edge on this field. They're 8-7-1 and one on this field. Third down and five. Harris, first down. Holy cow. You talk about a pro reception by Harris. Skerlack ran him out, but it was too late as far as Tech was concerned. What a catch by Harris. Harris from Dallas Carter, three-year letterman senior. Bucky Richardson is now in at quarterback. Doesn't need to run any fakes here. It's first and ten. On the option, that's Lewis. And Lewis is brought down at about the 23-yard line by James Mosley, a gain of eight. What we may be seeing here, Greg, is the Aggies got a first down right around the 30. Is the belief they're sending a message to Tech. We can jam this ball down your throat. We've done it all day. You've got to start stopping our running game or we're going to throw it at you all afternoon. As evidenced by the number of times they've had double tight ends in the game and only one wide receiver. That's the case now. Oliver, the single wide receiver. There's the pitch back to Horton. And Horton has the first down a little bit more inside of about the 18-yard line. Donald Harris again coming up. We've called that name a lot. And again, against a running attack, when you're calling the free safety a lot, that team that's running is gaining a lot of yards. And that's what the case has been with the Aggies. Now the Aggies on first down take the second tight end out, put the wide receiver Harris back in, shuffle the fullbacks again, 
But if you're Texas Tech, you got to start thinking, here comes the run again. They got Simmons and Horton both in the backfield on the eye with three wide outs. And there's Horton, and Horton has it down to the 12-yard line. Again, approximately five as he stacked up by the center of the defense there. Tom Mathis Meyer, the right defensive end, and some inside help from Charles Perry. What an odd thing college football is one Saturday to the next. Last Saturday, Texas Tech just dominated the line of scrimmage against Baylor. Just totally stuffed Baylor. And today, here comes AM, fired emotionally, and they're dominating the Tech line of scrimmage. Again, the double tight ends with a second down and five. Lewis back in at the tail, takes the pitch. Nice stop. He was hit, actually, behind the line of scrimmage by defensive end Lynch, and he was only able to gain a yard or two as he struggled forward near the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and about four. Big play here for Tech. Very big play. Because if they can shut this off at just a field goal, again, with Tech's offense and the type of game breakers they have, Walker Anderson, Gray, Ferris, Thurman, you got to figure Tech is going to find their offense sooner or later today. Harris wide to the top of the screen. Darren Lewis and Robert Wilson back in the running back spots with Wilson in motion. Quarterback keep. Lewis Richardson has got to be very close to the first down. Looks we like may have to measure. Looks like he fell right at the seven-yard line, and they had to get to just outside the seven. Mathis Meyer making the tackle. I would imagine this will be a measure. Well, now where the ball is spotted, I don't think they made it. Yep, I agree with you. I agree. And the Aggies, no question. No question at all. They don't think they've made it. They've already sent the double tight end in. They're going to go for it. Well, they've been very successful with that so far. They're going to measure it to let them know exactly where it stands. Looks like at least half the ball. That's about right. Half the ball. Fourth down. Bucky Richardson says half the ball. Well, the last two times on third and short, they ran fullback over left guard. And at the end zone where they were in close, they ran fullback over left guard. Let's see if fullback over left guard is still the Aggies' choice on short yardage. Richardson stays in with a full house backfield. Middle back here over left guard is what they've been running. Right guard. They give to Horton. He's got the first down down to the five. He got two yards. He needed about a half a yard. Mike Derryberry making the tackle along with Perry and Desmond Royal, but it will be a first down for AM now at the five. You know, I'm not so sure that ball wasn't fumbled at the end of this run. Take a look. Does does Horton keep this ball all the way? It's Luke. Might have been tearing it away. And actually, they're gonna that was actually uh, Wilson, not 39-32. Same result, two yards. It may have been after he was already tell considered what, down. Second, tell, first and goal. Tell you what, that was another Aggie that came up with the ball when they got off the ground. Here's Lewis. Down to the three-yard line. Harris and Derryberry leading the tackling charge. It'll be second and goal from the three. And now Horton comes back into the game. Along with Shane Crawl, number 87. Yet another tight end. They go four deep. Actually, uh, the Aggies go deep in the tight end department. Ross, Hartley, Jones, Crawl, mm. Lewis out of the lineup. There's that stack again. Man in the center is Wilson. But the goal goes this time. Touchdown! And this time it was Horton carrying the mail. So number 39, Larry Horton with the touchdown at 729. And the extra point coming up. Aggie fans who haven't seen much scoring this year have been deprived of one of their favorite rituals. The Aggies always get to kiss their dates after scores, and there hasn't been a lot of kissing going on at AM this year. <laughs> All right, the extra point Slater will put his toe into it. It is up. It is good. And so Slater, with the extra point kick, makes the scoreboard read. Texas A&M 14, Texas Tech nothing, with 7 minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the first half. We take a look at the touchdown again. 
capping a 15-yard drive. Horton with the score. Again, that's the middle back over left guard. That same play we've been telling they've been running short, they run it with a little alteration there, a fake right back over left guard, but it's still the same basics. And the Aggies lead it 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Thing on the scoreboard. Kicking off Lane Talbot. What an odd angle. Tech has only had 14 offensive plays to 37 for the Aggies. And Tech will have some plays, but they aren't going <laughs> to... They've got a long way to go. Greg, you want to see a team that's thinking? You know why the Aggies did that? Tyrone Thurman. They're ahead in the game, and they don't want that little water bug doing something to change the momentum in this game. They'll give up five or ten yards to keep Thurman from turning the momentum in the game. Gary Sorrell off the 12th man team making that tackle. Of course, the earlier kickoff went in the end zone. The, what win there is was behind the kicker. This time it was going to be more difficult. Billy Joe Tolliver is going to go deep. Intercepted. No, it's covered and intercepted at about the 30-yard line by William Thomas. Thomas back to midfield. Still on his feet at about the 36-yard line. Terry Price with a good block, which helped out Thomas get that extra yardage. Price put some pressure on, but actually the big thing on that was really the throw. It was the fact that he just kind of threw it up for grabs, hoping that the intended receiver could outrace the two defenders. Watch the block O'Neal Gilbert lays on, coming back. Now watch, you're going to see it here. Here comes Gilbert, 55. Watch Gilbert. Boom! Holy cow! Oh, oh, that'll rattle your fillings, won't it? 35-yard line, the Aggies have it, and Osgood is back in at quarterback. Horton, two-yard game, trying to strip it away, but Tech unsuccessful as Horton picks up two. Here's that block again. O'Neal Gilbert folding black back to block for his... His return man, oh, it's past that. It was just back upfield. Sorry, it was just out of camera angle on the ISO. Second down and eight. Lewis and Wilson, the running backs behind Osgood. Reverse. Rod Harris. It looks like six. Flip. There's a clip. There is a clip. A flag down. It was an outstanding run by Harris, but a flag was thrown back at about the 36-yard line, which was the line of scrimmage. It's going to come back. That's against the Aggies. Personal foul, A&M. Yeah, they, they called that, I believe, for grabbing from behind. It could have been called clip or hold. Let's see if you can see There it is right there. They call the hold right there on Texas Aggie player Richmond Webb. So it comes all the way back, a touchdown nullified. Hold it. Offense, still second down. And it will be with 626 remaining in the first half. The Aggies lead remains 14 to nothing. Well, a crowd on its feet with the reverse and the scintillating run by Harris. You have to try it again. Cornelius Patterson is into the lineup, number 14. He's a flanker at the top of the screen. He's a former high school, well, same high school as Osgood, the quarterback. Horton! And he's tripped up by a shoestring by Donald Harris, or he might have gone all the way. He got a, the ball back to about the 30 four yard line 33 or four yard line so it'll be eight yards needed for the first down on a third down play Aggies run the draw and Horton picks the hole correctly good blocking downfield and Harris who gets just an ankle the one thing Horton's run did do it put the Aggies in possible long field goal position even if they don't make any yards on this play Horton and Simmons the running back with wide receivers top Osgood looks to throw Comes outside to Horton. He's got the first down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Horton with a good catch and run. 
Out of the backfield, Sammy Walker and Boyd Cowan in on that tackle. Walker, the right cornerback out of McKinney, Texas. Well, this is just what Spike Dykes and the tech staff feared, that A&M, after weeks and weeks of frustration, would get on some kind of an emotional roll. And right now, Tech desperately needs somebody to make a big play to stop the momentum, get him into the locker room 14 down, and try to reorganize this thing. Harrison Oliver wide to the top. Tight end split on the left. The give instead goes to Randy Simmons off right tackle, and Simmons picks up about two or three. It'll be second down and seven. Desmond Royal with tackle. Greg, you know, the Aggies just keep throwing these high school All-American running backs at you. Wilson Simmons, Horton, Lewis. We haven't even seen the kid McAfee, who's a terrific-looking young runner. They got three quarterbacks, and there's not a senior in the whole bunch. <laughs> Second down and eight. 4.46 to go in the half. Aggies lead it 14 to nothing. Roll left to the corner. Harris. And it was a flag thrown on the far side of the field. And he may have been covering him just a little bit too much. Harris turned a face up for the ball, and Walker, who was not watching the ball, ran into him at that point. Here's the word. No, they're going to wave it off. Flag off. Uncatchable out of the end zone. All right. You heard the explanation. Now let's see. What do you think? Uncatchable? Mm, yeah, well, not, probably a decent call. I, that was really close. Obviously, uh, if I think it would have been possible the way they were going and the way their momentum was was uh, was moving. I don't think anybody could have caught it, but I, I don't think it was far enough out of the end zone that if you were standing on the corner, you couldn't have caught it. In any event, it's third down and eight. Incomplete. That one was pretty much thrown away. Shane, Shane Garrett was the nearest receiver, but another flag. That's a line of scrimmage flag indicating either an illegal motion or an offsides. Dropped by the referee at the sideline. Illegal motion, a &M. That was an incomplete third down play, so the decision has to be made by Tech. Yeah, that'll certainly be declined rather than to give the Aggies another chance to gain a first down, and it'll force A&M, you would think, into some kind of field goal situation. Illegal motion. Line not set. Offense declined. Fourth down. So the Aggies send Slater in to try the extra for the field goal, a 74 percenter coming into this year. Bucky Richardson, we think, will hold. I mean, he's the guy that's in to hold. Yep. <laughs> Slater inside the 40 last year was 16 for 16. Very accurate short distance kicker. It is up. It is. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. There's kind of died. There's the break the tech needed. Remember, we talked about something had to stop the Aggie momentum. Tech got their break. Well, here it is. The ball just went up in the air and just flat out died. And there's not that much of an appreciable wind. But it died and went off to the right. So now with 428 to go in the first half, Tech has the ball back. And again, the thing about Tech with their offense, they have averaged 29 points a game in three games. They only won one of them. The one they won last week, they put 36 points on the board. They are certainly capable of exploding. They just haven't exploded at all in this game. And two of the more explosive players are going wide to the top of the screen. And Eddie Anderson and Tyrone Thurman. Now Thurman in motion. The give instead goes to Gray. And the running game had not been working. Gray back to the line of scrimmage and no more. O'Neal Gilbert, the nose guard, and Dana Batiste, the linebacker, heading that charge defensively. Tell, tell you what, Gilbert got a taste of a, of a little flesh on that block on the run back, and he still chews stuff. <laughs> Second down and 10. And the, the thing that really has hurt Tech is they've just gained nothing on first down plays. They, they are a passing team, but they're being forced to pass instead of dictating when to pass. Thurman in motion. Tolliver in trouble. Sack. Aaron Wallace. That's three sacks for the Blitz brothers. Wallace and Roper 
and the first must we had on the game for Texas Tech was pick up the blitz because if the Aggies ever get their blitzing defense rolling, they can just knock you out of a football game. What they're doing with the outside linebackers, Wallace and Roper, they're using their speed. They're just letting them curl around the blockers well, and figuring their speed is good enough to still get there. Well, one of the things they take advantage of here, Greg, is that Tolliver won't run much. He won't run up the pocket and up the middle on you. It's a third down and nearly 20. Here he comes again. Wallace gets credit for that one. That's three sacks for Aaron Wallace. And it's fourth down. Mm. Well, so much for the little break that Tech may have gotten on the missed field goal. They give the ball right back. And Tolliver has no chance to look at anybody. That was Roper, who was about a half step behind Wallace. Here's Simmons punt. Block. They're coming. Block and touchdown. touchdown, Aggie. We'll have to sort that one out. Who fell on the football? We think Horton. We'll have to wait and see. There were about five maroon jersey Aggies that were right there. 20 to nothing is the score. The extra point will be coming up. Now the Aggies huddle off to the side here. They can either run a play from this or kick. Alex Morris, I think, is the man who's going to be credited with the recovery. Oh, they're going to run for two. Got Richardson it. got him. Boy, they're opening up the playbook. Bucky Richardson with a two-point conversion. And with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half, it's Texas A&M 22, Texas Tech nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. That block punt, which has been officially credited to Larry Horton, although I'll tell you what, he had a bunch of teammates that got through with him. Total yards, A&M 189 in this uh, first half, to only 22 for Texas Tech. Well, Tech really desperately needed to get this thing to halftime down 14 to nothing. Now they're looking at three or four scores to get the lead back in the game. And they're looking at one more thing. An Aggie team that's emotionally been released from jail. Another short kick. There won't be any long returns likely on this. Although there is a little bit of a hole as it was brought up top by Jim Vasquez, a cornerback for Tech and on the special teams. Bubba Hilja out of Cotula, Texas, 6'2", 205 pounds off the 12th man club. Now let me, t let me ask you something. Could Bubba Hilja from Cotula play for anybody else in the world? No. He's got a special job. Hey, Michigan State would force that guy to change his name. <laughs> if you're Bubba, you got to play in Texas, right? Boy, oh. no, 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 no room at all for Clifton Winston. And O'Neal Gilbert is the man who pinched him off. And this is what has really hurt, among other things, hurt Tech. They just can't get anything on first down, pass or throw. They're going to a no huddle offense here. Second down and 10. 217 remaining. First half. 22 nothing. Now the play call. Tolliver completes a pass for about a seven yard gain out to Charles Lott with Mickey Washington and Dana Batiste. Charles Lott is a big name or was a big name in high school football, but he was a prop 48 casually then last year redshirted. Still expect a lot from him as a tight end. Third down and three. And there's a first down and a little more for Winston. Winston piles forward to the 41-yard line. Mickey Washington making the stop. Gary Jones helping. And it's a first down for Tech. And the ball is at the 41-yard line with a minute 38 to go. A clock stop while they move the chains. No maybe, huddle. Maybe they ought to never huddle again. That's the only way they're going to get enough plays, I think, because of the, well, Aggies say enough of this stuff, and they call timeout. <laughs> so they're going to slow things down just a little bit. So run and shoot only part of it. First down and 10. Play action. Dump off pass. McDowell. And McDowell is run down out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, but a good gain of about seven. Adam Bob and Alex Morris teaming on the stop. And again, no huddle for Tech. Realize Tech can afford to run some shorter plays. They have three timeouts left, so Tech has a lot of time left in the half. And actually, it might be well for Tech to start running some of those short passes. 
It's taken them a long time. They're getting sacked on the long sets. There's a quick one out. And there's Thurman. The little water bug has the first down to the 29-yard line. Mickey Washington making the tackle with Adam Bob. One thing Tech is learning now is that uh, maybe they just got to play a two-minute offense for the whole second half, which you got to be in pretty good shape to do that. Outrageous stat of Tyrone Thurman. Terrific pass catcher. 57 catches in his career. One for a touchdown. <laughs> and amazing. First down. 56 seconds and ticking. A give on the run to the right side. And good yardage on the spin by Winston, the Houston Smiley Jr. Gary Jones making the tackle. And the ball is stopped at about the 21-yard line. 46 seconds left. At least Tech is in the point now where they ought to be able to get some points, or at least have a good chance. They want seven, though. Now you got a chance to do something the Aggies may not suspect. On second and two, you can run the ball again because the clock stops at first down. So you call two plays in the huddle. If you don't make the first down, you use another of your timeouts. Tech but if you make it, you just go ahead and line up and do it again. And Tech still has two. Let, let us remind you at this point, however, that this telecast is authorized under rights granted to home sports entertainment and is... Has given themselves something to encourage them on the way to the locker room at halftime. Something has worked, and now yep. it's just a question of holding on to the football and get at least three out of this. And again, with Tech's offense, they can score points in a hurry in the second half. They've got the speedsters to do it. But what they've done with this hurry-up offense, it's, it's worn down the Aggie defense just a little bit. And it also, with the short passes and the quick drops, has negated the problem of being sacked. Well, if you can run this offense for a few possessions and, and maybe get the Aggie linebackers out of the game for a little while, maybe later in the game you can go back to your deeper passing game. Blackshear, Thurman, and Anderson are the wideouts. Thurman in motion, and there's your give inside, and it's good for the first down, so they'll have to move the chains, stop the clock with 40 seconds, and they'll line up at the line of scrimmage. Terry Price on the tackle. That's exactly what Tech did called two plays. Now they're ready to go again. Aggie's got to be careful here. Tech knows what this play is already. And they'll snap the ball quickly. Clock starts. Tolliver, quick drop, fakes, looks inside, throws it behind the intended receiver, Eddie Anderson. He was defended very tightly on the corner. Looked like that was uh, Kevin Smith in on the cornerback uh, spot. Number 46. Aggies have gone to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 defensive back look. It's a 3, 3, 5 the Aggies are now playing. 32 seconds left in the half. Second down and 10. Aggies lead it 22 to nothing. Tyler rolls left. Goes to the end zone. Nobody there. Again, good coverage by Mickey Washington. He was right there with the intended receiver, Travis Price. Well, that's about the third time they've tried to pick on Mickey Washington. And when the ball was thrown, Mickey was inside the pants of the wide receiver. I mean, he was on him. Woo. Well, this one's either going to be a first down, a touchdown, or they're going to have to try a field goal on the fourth down play because it's third down and 10 with 27 seconds left. Or the odds are at least in that favor. Been a shotgun. Blackshear, Thurman, Anderson. Anderson wide to the top of the screen. Looking for the end zone. It is caught and dropped by Thurman. Did not hold on to the football. Again, give Gary Jones credit because he's right there to bother the reception. Now Thurman, slow getting up. Oh, that's not good. Oh, and it's a right ankle problem to Tyrone Thurman. And he hobbles off. Oh, and you hate to see that. That's such a fine player. Let's see if we can pick up where he hurt the right ankle. Oh, he got whipped. He got a little leg whip as Jones went down. Tech now will try for points from the field goal route. Scott Segrist. And a timeout, however, before they try it with 22 seconds remaining. Tech has one timeout left. It's a Tech timeout. 35-yarder by Sechrist, and he hits the crossbar, and it's off left. Well, if it can go wrong for Tech in the first half, it has. You know, it strikes me 
that Murphy wrote his law after watching this first half. This is the first miss from this distance this year. You hardly ever see those hit the pole and go in. Now for the Aggies, it's a question of watch the agony of a kicker. He hooked it more than he wanted. Now Bucky Richardson is in at quarterback. Uh, Lord. Son of a gun. That's the son of former Texas Tech baseball coach Cal Segrist, himself a former major league player. Keith McAfee is also in in the backfield for the Aggies with 17 seconds as Bucky Richardson hands it off and <laughs> not bad run for Robert Wilson. He's still going. <laughs> oh, for a run that was supposed to just kind of run out the clock. Pretty big game. Did, you know, the most impressive part of that run was after it was all over, his dead run hurdle over the bench. Holy cow. Wilson with 33, a third 50. Six yards rushing in the first half unofficially, and now we've got eight seconds left. Well, I think if you're the Aggies, you think throw the ball here, wouldn't you? All right, they're far enough away now. I think sure. The, well, Harris is in the lineup. And they've got wide out to the bottom of the screen, and Patterson, Bucky Richardson, however, is not ordinarily the passing quarterback, and he overthrows Harris with three seconds left. Second and ten, the ball still at about the 45-yard line. Halftime, we'll take a little look at the band activity on the field. Norm and I will recap things, and then we'll have the second half for you, so stay with us. It's 22 to nothing, A&M leading Tech. Three seconds to go in the first half. Robert Wilson and Keith McAfee, Rod Harris, Cornelius Patterson in at some of the skill spots with three seconds left. Give straight up the middle for virtually no game. And that was uh, Wilson, and that resigns the fact that the half will end with no more points. So the halftime score has Texas A&M leading the Texas Tech Red Raiders here at Kyle Field by a score of 22 to nothing. Our halftime action, and it's a good high kick. Harris, no fair catch call, and he stopped right away, and a flag is thrown. You know, where, Boy, that was, where that was thrown, you'd think it was for interfering with Harris. And they're discussing on the far side of the field. Cowan tackled him immediately. you got to give him that room. He's He's got, you know, you, you hear different terms, private space, air space, whatever, and that's the call against Tech. Made the catch anyway. The flag was thrown. Kick catching interference. Oh, that's a tough call. I tell you what. Cowan did a good job of slowing up, realizing that that was a problem, and they still threw the flag on him. That's a tough penalty. On that, that's one now. I know that, you know, the official listening is going to say, come on now, Greg, you can't do this. But that's one of those deals that I'd hold it and call it at the last second if he doesn't catch the ball. But if he catches it, I'm going to eat that one. As I say, an official will say you can't do that. There's a gain inside to Lewis as he spins outside. He needs one block. He cuts back to the center of the field, and he's across the 29-yard line. Darren Lewis. <laughs> Sammy Walker finally hung tough. Boyd Cowan helped out. Donald Harris was... You know, I was, I was struck by a phrase you just used, Greg. He needs one block. Sometimes he doesn't need any blocks. <laughs> you get him out in open territory. You know, he has one of the new phrases, what they call shakeability. He's also got 103 yards rushing and just added about eight more. As he's down to the 22, well, they're going to mark it at the 24 where the knee touched. Darnell Pratt, who is one of the three right ends defensively used by Tech. Eddie Kittle. He'd been figured to start. He had an injury in the two a days. Tom Mathis Meyer moved in and has done well. Boy, the Aggies of the second half looking just like the Aggies of the first half. Second and five. There's uh -oh. Lewis. Cuts inside the block down to the 13 yard line. It's another first down. 
And Greg, you're starting to see the effects of the pounding the Tech's defense has taken all day. They're getting up slower. There are less people in the pileups when they bring the runner down. All that's a sign of is that it's starting to dawn on Tech. They've got 25 more minutes to get kicked around unless they do something dramatic to change the momentum here. Gary Oliver on the far side or near side as Lewis takes the ball up the middle down across the nine yard line. Pickup of almost five more yards. It'll be second down. Charles Perry, who backed up Desmond Royal last year, now has a starting tackle spot of his own along with Terry Lynch. Boy, and a lot of credit to the middle of the Aggie line. The guards, Richmond Webb and Jerry Fontenot, and the center, Mike Arthur, and his backup, Chris Work, have really done yeoman duty in there. The Aggies have gotten a lot of yardage straight up the gut in the game. Ball on about the eight-yard line. 123 yards rushing for Lewis. And down to the one-yard line. I go. Oh, touchdown! That's Robert Wilson. He made it in. Donald Harris thought he might have been able to stop him, but he carried him right into the end zone. Well, we talked, even as the ball was being snapped, about the middle of the Aggie offensive line, and they do it again. The snap is made, and the middle of the line just blows back the Tech defense. Wilson was 71 yards, rushing himself on a couple of touchdowns. The extra point attempt by Slater. It is good, and with 11 minutes and 47 seconds to go here in the third quarter, the scoreboard registers seven more. Texas A&M 29, Texas Tech nothing. All right, here's the play. The ball is just about the nine-yard line. Watch Fontenot, the right guard, 67, and the center. They just forge open a huge hole. Fontenot seals it off. And then Wilson, boy, is this a good-looking runner. Plows in. Watch the hole, 67 and 52 create. Fontenot and Arthur. The strength of Wilson was evident there as he carried the defender in with him. And now it's Travis Price and Tyrone Thurman back to, well, the ball blows off the tee. Talbot will kick off again. There you see Thurman. He is... Been a tremendous player throughout his entire career, despite no size to speak of. And he's got it in the end zone. And he brings it out to the 21-yard line, where he'll put it in play. Brian Edwards, a 12th man team from Teamer from Fresno. Trent Childress, I guess, number 17. Also in there. Tyrone Thurman has not returned a punt, but he's fifth on the Southwest Conference all-time list career-wise. There's the scoring drive. Not a very long one. Maggie's eating up yardage in big chunks. Is this a change in quarterback for Tech? Or is this still Tolliver? Still 17 is yep. still Tolliver. Incomplete, almost essentially super grab by Eddie Anderson, but Brent Smith was there. And once again, these have been very tough passes to complete for Tolliver. He's, would he's you, thrown very little easy ones. Would you believe Tolliver, who threw for 272 yards against this team last year, has thrown for 42 yards today? Four for 15 for 42 yards. Mike, and remember now, one of his completions for 17 yards was fumbled after the catch. So they've gotten nothing going any phase of the offense. Thurman Tom and sack. Yeah, let's see. Leon Cole <laughs> and John Roper. Leon Cole uh, ecstatic. Le Leon Cole came rushing out of the pileup and collapsed from joy after he got the sack. <laughs> well, this is the first sack by an Aggie defensive lineman this year. Yeah, that's why he's uh, so excited. Boy, but the linebackers are Wallace and Roper dominating this game right now defensively. And it's third down 
and 19. Gray, nowhere near enough. Wow, you hear the pads popping. Gary Jones, Brent Smith, Alex Morris, John Roper, and it will be fourth down. The Aggie fans love it as they wave the 12th man towels. Well, what's happening here is Texas Tech is getting the punishment for everything Nebraska, LSU, and Oklahoma State did to Texas A&M. And I'm telling you, if these teams met next week in Lubbock, the team in white might win this game because these teams are pretty even. Short punt, Harris to the 41 yard line. And so the Aggies will once again have outstanding field position. Anthony Lynn of the Red Raiders making the tackle along with John Elliott, Terry Lynch. It's 29 to nothing with 10 minutes and 12 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. The Aggies have led all the way. They scored with 31 seconds left in the first quarter and have not looked back. And there has really been no bright spot at all for Tech yet. Now the problem for Tech is all the emotions gone. It, you're getting beaten up. Your offense has given your defense no signal it's coming back. And there's 25 minutes to go in the game. Now is where you got to dig down in your guts and play individual wars with the man across from you. Now you're trying to survive if you're a Tech defensive player. Osgood, fake, goes deep. Incomplete, and a flag is thrown. It was intended for Cornelius Patterson, Sammy Walker on defense, and Sammy might have been a little... Well, let's see. No, number two, Donald Harris on defense. It may have been a little too tight. Two flags on the play. There's one at the line of scrimmage also. Now, there's a possibility. There's a possibility that ball could be offensive interference. I don't think so, but that's what Tech wanted on the play. Now, we got two flags, so let's let Joe Thomas's crew sort this out and tell us what's going on. He's got it sorted. He's coming over to tell us. Illegal receiver downfield, AM. And pass interference. We'll try it all over again. This play action was so good, the lineman blocking went downfield. They said, oh, well, <laughs> Lewis must have the ball. <laughs> and there's a, oh, a little shove there, you see from Walker. Oh. And later over, Harris got over. Hey, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, Craig, if that's defensive pass interference, it's been committed 4,914 times this afternoon around America. All right, first and 10. Fumble recovered by the man who did it, Chris Osgood. Osgood now has had three of those in this game. He's gotten them all back. First, uh, second down and 10. That pass was interesting because Cornelius Patterson, we take a look at the fumble. He just has the snap. And then on the, the fake give, about gave it all right. Nice catch, though. <laughs> Second and ten. Ball at the Tech 40. Lewis. Oh, look at the cutback. He had a great hole at the line of scrimmage and then cut through the linebacker area. Harris and Cowan and Walker, but it was a first down. Another big gain, and he's got to be nearing 150 yards already. Well, this Cajun that plays right guard for the Aggies, this Jerry Fontenot, look at 67. His man is five yards downfield. I mean, what a job of blocking by Arthur and Fontenot as the Aggie middle just dominates the ball. There it is again, up the middle. First down, and the ball is spotted on the second play or in the play from scrimmage, a gain of about five. Charles Rowe, as Tech goes into some of the backup linebackers. It'll be a three-yard gain, actually. Rowe from Killeen, most improved player in the spring in there, along with Richardson now, quarterback. Larry Horton, Randy Simmons. Boy, why? wide split by the defensive tackles for Tech. Option play, Bucky Richardson makes a bad choice, but he is again saved by Larry Horton, who held on to the football. Donald Harris, I say bad choice. Once they've got their arms around you, it's real tough to make a clean pitch. Do you know Horton wound up with five yards on that play? Yeah, he saved him again. He saved the bad pitch. 
By the way, there's a player in for Tech now at middle linebacker. You remember from their offense in the last few years. Isaac Garnett, who's rushed for more than 1,000 yards as a fullback, is in at middle linebacker for Tech now. There's Brian Ross lined up in the backfield as in motion as Richardson keeps it on the option. Cuts inside, but not for much as he's dumped by Matt Wingo. Pasadena Doby, a redshirt freshman linebacker, number 45. It will be a first down, however. That's all he needed. And the ball's just inside the 15. You know, AM, we've always talked this season about their identity. Are they a throwing club? Are they a running club? Do they mix it up club? Right now, they're a multiple offense team between the 20s. <laughs> but when they get to the 20, here comes the offense that runs the ball. Scott Harrison comes in for Royal at one of the line positions. And look at the side move by Lewis. Lewis is down to the four. Donald Harris making the tackle, and Harris has a lot of them. But again, that's the old story. Your free safety makes a lot of tackles on a team that's running the ball, and you're losing, and that's what the story is. Well, when Harris made 30 tackles against Arizona, they lost 35 to 19. Look at the move here. Let's see. We're up to 148 yards rushing for Lewis. You know, sometimes some of the runners in this conference just take your breath away. What a terrific runner this kid is. First and goal from the five-yard line. Down to the two-yard line is Randy Simmons. And Donald Harris and Isaac Garnett making the tackle. That's the middle linebacker in the safety. A&M's decided to get serious at the goal. Second and third tight end. Yep, and they'll run uh, Ross in. Uh, actually, they'll line him in the backfield as a blocker. Now, this is the play back, so to speak. where the ball goes to the middle back over left guard. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson and Horton are the real running backs as Ross goes in motion. Oh. Option play, Richardson, touchdown, Aggies. <laughs> they got to load the cannon. It wasn't ready. <laughs> What's happening here? Richardson seems unhappy about something. Is there a flag for something? Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, I yeah. see one outside the end zone. I guess for spiking the ball or celebrating. Dead ball. Spiking the ball. Yep. Offense. Touchdown. Be penalized on the kickoff. Now the cannon goes. You know what? The, again, the official's job. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, Lord. He, <laughs> that was a real severe spike, wasn't it? Listen, if, if that's spiking, he'd be known as one of the wimps of the NFL for that spike. <laughs> Scott Slater will try the extra point. Another flag down. Flag a kick is up and appears to be good, but we've got a flag. Yes, that's what it's for. Kick you, is good. You can't climb the backs of your defensive players in an effort to get more height to block the kick. That's a legal move. So, uh... Since that was after the play, and the spike was after the play, okay, officials, does that cancel each other out? <laughs> we'll see. Wait a they call that unsportsmanlike or illegal participation? Yeah, technically illegal participation. Oh, okay. Got too many men on the field. Too many men. Oh. Defense, extra point counts, penalized on kickoff. Tyrone Thurman, who they may not want to try to have to tackle. Oh, wow, a little pop fly kickoff, oh. and it is taken at the 40. That's the kind you kick up in the air and before the offensive team does, but uh, that didn't happen. Instead, Bart Talkington was able to take that one on the fly. You know, that Talkington's a smart kid. He signaled fair catch for that ball, and you don't usually see those up people to think quick enough. That's the basis of that kick, that the up person won't think quick enough to signal for a fair catch, and he'll get hit as he's making the catch. There was the play. Again, a, a quick drive. Eight plays, 36 to nothing. McDowell in motion. Quick pass out to... Thurman tired Thurman and Thurman has just about gotten to the first down line Basil Jackson and Gary Jones making the tackle Tyrone was there yeah, we'll see where they spot it it looks like he may have 
falling just about a couple inches short. You know, Greg, we spoke at halftime about what would Tech do to start the second half, and they didn't go back to the thing that worked at the end of the first half. They didn't go back to the very short dump-offs and, and quick plays that seemed to have some success on the final drive. Now, that first series was just the same. There's a quick handoff inside, and... Not a whole lot of yardage. Sheffield into the game. Basil Jackson and Dana Batiste. Jackson backs up Adam Bob, a linebacker. Well, Tolliver's had a tremendous career. In fact, HSE was fortunate to be on the scene in his debut game, in which at that time he set the Southwest Conference passing record. As a freshman rookie, he had played one game previous, partially, and in his first start, broke all the records and he's really <laughs> tough act to follow he's never been that good since that's incomplete intended for McDowell as he was in the grasp of Roper but unlike pro football he still was able to get rid of the ball and not be whistled dead you know Tolliver had a lot of promise as a pitcher in high school he, he threw, threw a bunch of no hitters didn't yeah he? threw 14 of them was clocked at <laughs> 92 miles an hour in high school pitching for Boyd in class 2a of course the opposing teams used whiffle ball bats how can you pitch 14 no-hitters? I mean, I don't want to say, as good as he may have been, it sounds to me like the competition wasn't quite <laughs> up to snuff. Uh-oh. Gets away from the sack, but now where's he going to throw it? Back across the field. Danger, danger, danger. Tipped incomplete. Oh. Gary Jones got a hand on it. Jeff Huff was putting a lot of pressure. And, of course, Roper... Uh, <laughs> He's always there. You know, Jones made a really nice play in a second regard. As he went up with his right hand, he tucked his left hand in behind him because as you go around the receiver, they'll often call you for interference if you bump with the offhand. And Jones intentionally hung that left hand behind him so he wouldn't get that call. Tech calls timeout. Running out as soon as he got in position, Eddie Anderson says give us a break and so he will Anderson coming into this game caught six passes for 13.8 yards per catch but all these numbers that are very impressive when you take a look at them aren't Roper looks like he's a little gassed out there he's been on the field uh, not really that much when you really get down to it well problem is he's been on Tolliver that much though Billy Joe Tolliver has one total yard offense. He has minus 50 rushing and 51 passing. Well, you look at the game breakers on this team, and we'll tick them off for you. How much have we seen Ferris? Not much because of the hip pointer. How much have we seen Thurman or uh, Tyrone Thurman? Not much. He's caught a couple little hitch passes. How much have we seen Wayne Walker? Not much. He averages 36 yards a catch. How much have we seen Eddie Anderson? I don't believe he's caught a pass. I don't think so. James Gray had a couple of decent runs in the first half, but the Aggies took that part of the game away. The Aggies have basically amputated every big playmaker from Tolliver's offense. 36 to nothing with 6.06 to go in the third. Third and 10. Look at this line. 47 out of the shotgun. Tolliver, look out. Throws it up for Gret and has a man as Tyrone Thurman uses all five feet, three inches to get the pass in front of Gary Jones at the first down. Good job by Tolliver. He was under heavy pressure, but he realized that Thurman was all alone downfield with single coverage. In that situation, you throw the ball where it can be caught and hope your man will make a play out of it. Look at that pass. A little sidearmed it. That was a Dan Quisenberry special. <laughs> And it seemed to die a little bit as it did, but it's first down. Ball at the 28 yard. This is only the second time that Tech has really had any kind of a scoring threat. And they're still 28 yards away. On the draw, they give to Sheffield, and Sheffield is bumped down at the 23 yard line. Basil Jackson making the stop. Last week at this stage of the game, AM found itself. They were getting drummed by Oklahoma State, but they dug in and they showed some character. Tech has now got to start sending its defense signals for next week. It's got to start saying to itself, hey, all right, we went to AM, we got shot up a little bit, but we can still move the football. Second down and three. Flag. That's a double Two flags. Motion. That's double motion against Texas Tech. They had a man coming in motion, 
and the back stepped up to, to catch the blocker. That's double motion against them. So the penalty against Tech, just when they didn't need it. You know, this Aggie defense has been very good in this game, and they were very good in the entire second half against Oklahoma State. The Aggies in the second half allowed just 50 yards and three first downs. Now you can say, well, yeah, but the pressure was off. Uh, Oklahoma State pretty much had the game in hand, and that's true, but it has carried over. And the Third down. So it's third down and eight. Somebody's got to go pick up the flag there. There we are. Third and nine. Yeah, illegal shift. Two men moving offensively after the set call. By the way, the Aggies last year allowed 158 points all year. And they allowed 102 points in the first three games this year. Third down, long. Eight or almost nine. McDowell in motion, quick pass out to McDowell, good block, he cuts inside to the 20, he's got the first down to the 10, 5, touchdown Thomas, or Thurman rather, not Thomas, Thurman, Tyrone Thurman. We have seen in four years just the second touchdown <laughs> catch of little Ty Thurman's career. And he had a good block by McDowell, and Thurman got the ball in the end zone after a good uh, open field run. The one block sprung him, though, and Thurman then used his speed. Well, he had two big plays on that drive, and Tech is on the scoreboard. Segrist will try the extra point. Maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> he can't go for 30, so he might as well take one at a time, and it's good. So with four minutes and 39 seconds left, here in period three, our scoreboard reads Texas A&M 36, Texas Tech 7. The one touchdown that Texas Tech has registered so far. This is a very nice play. Watch the moves of 135-pound Tyrone Thurman. Saw that block earlier by McDowell when he came out of the backfield. He really set it up, and then Thurman used his moves to get it in. Shifty little character. And a 27-yard touchdown pass. Greg, let me ask you something about this kid. I think he's got a pro future. I know he's tiny. Yeah, well, he's, you know, I think someone will obviously take him to camp, and if he can demonstrate that he can return punts and perhaps kickoffs, well, you know, if, and there are if, more and more small players in the league in that specific job. Well, if Gerald McNeil, who's a massive 140 pounds, can play in Cleveland, yep. maybe Tyrone Thurman can play somewhere. Well, he certainly deserves a shot. He's got great speed. Of course, he had a 74-yard touchdown against the Aggies last year. Harris at the 10. He used great speed. There was no wall of blockers at all. He was able to, and a flag's thrown again, two of them. Yeah, two of them. Harris on the tackle. There is a familiar sight, the yellow hanky. They, and they are definitely different penalties. One is on the Aggies for an illegal block around the 25. Another was a play up around the 40 that may have involved some after-the-whistle activities. Again, our referee is Joe Thomas. He's checking with each official. The one that made the call at the 40, now he's checking with the one that made the call at the 25. His crew includes Bill Anger, Don Brown, Bobby Brooks, Bill Brown, John Lewis, and Jim Evans. Now he's going to tell us what he just learned. Okay, that's holding both ways. <laughs> <laughs> but there are different points, so how do they sort this out? That's what he's telling the Aggies. Okay, he'll tell us. That's his job. He's paid to do this. Okay. Grab holding. On the return. Holding here. The offset penalties. We kick. Kick it again. Double deeps. We have Garrett on the far side. And number 34, Keith McAfee on the near side. There's Garrett. So they got two men back. And the kick is popped up in the air. Fairly short. Garrett will take it on the 14. And a flag, and that's probably going to be a clip or a hold, but uh, it's returned to the 24-yard line. It is going to be a clip against the Aggies. And Boyd Cowan made the stop, and it is a clip, preliminary signal. Jackie and, Sheriff says, oh, son of a gun. And it's against defensive back Chris Crooms, number 28. 
And this one's going to stick the Aggies around their 10-yard line. Levy on the run by first down. Now let's see if we can see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. There it is. That's a definite clip. Yep. Hit him from behind like that, and you're going to get called for a clip. Do you know that it is possible? <laughs> There's the flag throw. They don't do it much, but according to the, the rule book, we used to think that they didn't name numbers because it was, you know, something they just didn't do with amateur sports. They actually can. They just never do. It's in the rule book. McAfee is in there. Look at Lewis, though. Lewis is the big gun as he gets the ball across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Harris and Walker teaming on the tackle. Harris made the initial contact. It's a 13-yard gain. Yeah, let's up check the totals here. We have to 161. Well, Lewis is five. He is eight yards down field before he's touched. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful afternoon for running back. Harris hit him, he slid off, but that started his downfall as that's thrown away, intended from Osgood to Harris, second and ten. Sammy Walker on the coverage. Sammy, freshman red shirt, had a shoulder injury in the spring. And really nice pressure from weak side linebacker James Mosley. McAfee back. I'm telling you, these people keep running high school All-American running backs in and out of the lineup. <laughs> Pav was, you saw on the sideline, the third quarterback who has not played yet. Wilson and McAfee, the runners. McAfee gives him a juke. Doesn't have enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. Loss of two on the play. Terry Lynch, who uh, noted for his pass rush, although last year against A&M had nine tackles, so he was a strong performer in that game. Number 87, and then number 90 is Tom Mathesmeyer. Several walk-ons on the uh, yeah. Tech team that uh, have earned scholarships in the last year or two. Lynch and Mathis Meyer, the two starting defensive ends, are former walk-ons. Mosley's a walk-on. Third down and 13. Lewis and Wilson now teaming in the backfield. Osgood out of the pocket to Harris. First down. At the 38, he ripped it in. Cowan and Walker making the stop, but not until a first down. As you watch this game, and you watch what Darren Lewis and Rod Harris are capable of doing, can you understand why this team got shut out by LSU without those two in the lineup? That was uh, another reason why it was a real tough circumstance for Pavlis and Richardson, who started and played most of the quarterback position. Ransby and Harris are wide with Harris to the bottom of the screen. Osgood looks for Harris through his arms. A little bit high, a little behind him, incomplete. Second and ten. Merv Skurlock was there, but the pass was a little off target. You know, Skurlock's a wonderful story in the secondary of Texas Tech. This guy had one of the worst knee injuries you'd ever want to see in spring practice in 87. You want to hear something that sounds bad, Greg? A totally dislocated knee. Ouch! That hurts. Yes. And so consequently, he was redshirted last year. Up, loss on the play here. Good wrestle job by James Mosley, the veteran. Little extracurricular activity. Mosley, nearly 27 years old. He's a three-year military veteran before coming to Tech from St. Matthew, South Carolina. Just moved over to the linebacker spot this year after a defensive end uh, earlier in his career. Two minutes and 25 seconds and ticking in the third quarter. And you see the score, 36 to seven Aggies. Harris and Oliver are in uh, the wide spots. Coming down low is Ransby also in. So Ransby and Harris at the bottom of the screen. Osgood, the quarterback. A lot of time. Fake, dropped it. What happened here? <laughs> Came right out of his hand. Incomplete pass. Fake me out. The ball just slipped right out. You know, fourth if, down. If Osgood has only, he's had only really one problem the last two weeks. The ball tends to squirt out of his hands at times. It's happened in handoffs and snaps. It slipped out of his hands a couple times passing the ball. Sean Wilson will punt. 
And over Randall gets some roll. And how well it's going to be down. Take no chance. Aggies down at inside the 30 at about the 28 yard line where Tech will have the football. Tech the last team to score. They scored about three minutes ago. With a minute 53 to go here in the third quarter, it's 36 to 7, and now Billy Joe Tolliver will see if he can't keep it going. You know, with 17 minutes to go, Tech with this guy, who's outrageous, mm -hmm. and receivers like Thurman, Walker, Anderson, and Gray, is one of the few teams in the nation that could stand on the sidelines and say, let's see, 17 minutes, four touchdowns, two two-point conversions, two one-points, we win. <laughs> because they can really hustle a ball up and down the field when they get their offense in gear. This uh, game, however, has patterned a great deal the last time the two teams played in College Station in 86. Final on that one was 45-8 to A&M. Yeah. Uh, and they jumped off to a, well, the only points scored were by Tech in the final quarter. Okay. Sheffield up to the 30-yard line, a gain of only two or three yards. Dana Batiste and Basil Jackson, the linebackers on the tackle. Greg, we have had no indication that Gray is hurt, the running back for Tech. But we've not seen Gray in some time. We have had an indication that Irvin Ferris has a hip pointer. That's why he's not in at fullback. No huddle offense, but they take a little bit of time getting the play call at the line of scrimmage and knocked away by Wallace. The linebacker got his hand in the pattern. That was intended for Eddie Anderson, but defense was converging on Ender Anderson. And Wallace was the first man there with a the block. Five defensive backs in for the Aggies. And it's third down and eight. Now they had... Tolliver certainly is capable of beating that alignment, but they know he has to get the ball at least to the 38-yard line to retain possession. He's going to go deep. Overthrown. He's just not been on target. That one was intended for Blackshear. You know, that's a tough pass, but Tolliver in past years has been able to hang that one up and have his receivers handle it. Kevin Smith was defending on the play, the extra defensive back in the lineup. We have a minute 19 to go in the third, and here comes a punt. Jamie Simmons, the junior, will see Rod Harris dropping back. Harris will not take that one as he goes out of bounds, and it's going to be marked, looks like, right at about the 36-yard line. Aggie offense comes back on the field. I don't see the tight end. Is 82 Jones in there? 80, Mike Jones, the junior college All-American from a and really an interesting story. You want to talk about culture shock? The man left Bridgeport, Connecticut to go to junior college in Sacramento, California, and then chose a scholarship at College Station, Texas. Now, is that culture shock over about a three, four-year period? That will be a well-rounded American. Yes. The man <laughs> will have no accent. <laughs> he will know how everyone lives, not just the other half. First down and 10. And a short gain by Robert Wilson. John Elliott got under it and knocked him down. Two-yard two yard game. 32 or 33? Oh, it was 32. Well, are they showing me Simmons? Well, if it's if it was 33, it was Simmons. Are my well, eyes going on me again? Well, they play the same position. They're the same size. And that's a three. Yeah, that's Simmons. Okay. <laughs> Second down and eight. Richardson on the keep. He's got the first down, and he may go all the way. Finally run down on the far side of the field before he broke loose. Larry Horton with a fine block. I think it was Matt Wingo who uh, finally knocked him out, but a great run for Bucky Richardson, and this is his forte, running the option and running the ball. Watch 39. You want to know why they call it a crack back block? Boom! Horton just sweeps away the defender. 95 is the man who got to him. And the Red Raiders stop the play, Rodney White. Darren Lewis and Randy Simmons. And Lewis. there's Lewis, and Lewis gets down to about the 10, and that's almost all 10 he needed for a first down. Donald Harris coming up from the safety to make the tackle, along with Isaac Garnett. You know, Greg, Lewis is over 150 now. Wilson's got to be in the 70-80 range. McAfee's got 10 or 15. Simmons has got 10 or 15. Horton must have 20 or 30. Richardson must have 40 or 50. 
My goodness. Five seconds left in the quarter, and we will have no more plays here in period three. But when fourth quarter gets underway, the Aggies will have the ball on the 10-yard line, already leading Texas A&M 36, Texas Tech 7. Fourth quarter coming up on HSE. Quarter to play, and the Aggies already lead it 36 to 7, and they are threatening to make it more. They are on the 10 yard line. Second and the Aggie, inch. The Aggie trainer, as he was leaving the field, noticed the official standing there. He said, Would you like a drink? And the official said, Yeah, thanks. And they ran over, toweled off the official a little bit. Listen to the rushing in this game. Lewis, 157 yards. Wilson, 71. Horton, 30. Simmons, 17. And Richardson, 58. Wow. We're talking right at 325 yards rushing from those five people right now. And you get a feeling that you're going to see more of the same in the fourth quarter, don't you, Greg? With a big lead they have, it is second down and about an inch. Lewis. Down at the one. Nine-yard pickup, first and goal. So just check off nine more. Lewis up to 25 carries for 166 yards in the game. Wally Hartley with a fine block, and now they'll bring in the extra tight end. That's number 86, Brian Ross, and they'll run him at that H-back blocking position. In effect, what you've got in this lineup is eight blockers, two runners, and a quarterback. Well, no, they won't. They've actually got him up on the line. They have a regular eye formation, but that is what they've used quite often on short yardage. Lewis, touchdown, a and That's Lewis's first touchdown to go with all the yards. We'll try the kick. It's good. 14 minutes and 25 seconds left in the ball game. And the Aggie lead now is 43 to 7 over Texas Tech. tea kettle. Remember, Lewis is career high rushing in a game 194 yards. I mean, that's certainly within reach with a whole quarter to play, even figuring that sooner or later there'll be a lot of different people in the game. He only needs a couple of good runs to equal that. You know, I don't know if I'd want to be the Aggies' next opponent because they're roaring right now, but equally I don't know if I'd want to be Tech's next opponent. This is a good team that's been embarrassed. Well, of course, the Aggies' next opponent is Houston. Surprise teams in the Southwest Conference early. They will be playing that game in Houston. Of course, the Aggies always draw well in Houston, but now, uh, with the significance of the game, you want to try to be there. But if you can't be there, be with us on HSC for the replay next Saturday night. Another short kickoff will not be returned. Just down at about the 29-yard line. And Talkington is uh, the man who gets that ball. He's been very busy. He's returned, uh, well, he's received a couple of kickoffs. He hasn't returned them, but he's received a couple. And first down for Texas Tech. Here, if you're Tech, you start wondering, Tolliver's a senior. You got to start finding a backup quarterback to move up to number one next year. Somewhere in here, you think of bringing your backup quarterback and letting him get some experience. McDowell in motion, and he's going to try to set the block, but this time didn't get it done. That was on the other side of the field from the touchdown play earlier. Gary Jones got past the block last time. McDowell went to the other side of the field, set the block. Thurman caught the ball and motored in for the score. This time, he couldn't hit the block. And it was only a, about a three-yard gain. Second down and seven. Tolliver going to spin up, down. Well, you give Cole credit for that. Leon Cole 
Booper, 27, 22 tackles against Oklahoma, or 11 rather, last week out of his 22. He had a big game last week. And he's had a sack, his first sack of the year this week. Yeah, in fact, that's his second one of the game. And if I'm not counting wrongly, I believe that's seven Aggie sacks of Tolliver. Third down, six, 16. Six, six sacks. Two for Cole, three for Wallace, and one for Roper. Right. And it's caused the Red Raiders to be in long yardage situations. Here's, it almost got another one. Flag down, could be a hold. Tolliver running out of the pocket, short of the first down, so it probably isn't going to matter because it's fourth down and punt time. Alex Morris and Deion Snow making the tackle. And if the penalty is as expected against Tech, it would be fourth and about five, and, and it's holding. Yep. But it's not against Tech. It's against the Aggies. Woo. Interesting call there. That flag for holding was thrown five yards deep in the Tech offensive backfield, which is really a strange play. I'm not second-guessing the call. You can hold back there. It's just you almost never see flags for defensive holding in the offensive backfield. Because generally the only thing you're holding back there is the other team's quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfectly legal. <laughs> yeah, they're talking it over. Tolliver is being told how many yards he gets, which isn't enough, but he gets the down back. <laughs> Tolliver looked like he was saying to Joe Thomas, you got any play calls for me? <laughs> the heck with his penalty stuff. Hold it. Defense. Still third down. If they'd taken the play, which gained them just a, well, a little bit more, not much. Actually, there wasn't much of a difference. It would have been fourth down. And so now it's third down, and they've gotten uh, still about five to go. I, I'm a little mystified by the penalty yardage that was just walked off. It was marched off either eight yards from the spot or four and a half yards from the <laughs> line of scrimmage. You're going to have to get the book out. <laughs> they may have new penalties they've thrown in on us. All right, third down, almost six. Oliver's got to get away from the rush, goes downfield, and has a man. It is complete on the far side of the field before he's bumped out of bounds for Tech. That is number 40, Shane Sears, as we're starting to see some people that have not played yet. Deion Snow making the knockout. Here's Ravage Roper who's been in Tolliver's face all day, takes the inside route, spin move. Whoa! Tommy Webb stayed with him enough to throw him off just enough. First down. Hey, you know, that's a nice job by Webb. Roper gave him a couple of really nice moves, and Webb did a good job. Blackshear in motion. The give goes to Sears, and he's not going anywhere. Maybe the line of scrimmage, and Roper this time just stays home and plays inside. Well... We've been waiting now, wondering when John Roper would have one of those huge games. He had a huge game against this team last year, 14 tackles. He's having another huge game today, and his game may be over. He's coming out. Jeroy Robinson is in at that linebacker's position. And he takes the helmet off, comes to the sidelines, gets a big hand from the Aggie crowd. Some congratulations on the sidelines. Second down and 11. Sheffield strung out by Jeroy Robinson and also uh, Gary Jones. Jeroy Robinson got to him first. Jones came in second. It'll be third down. Tech has rushed the ball 25 times for 19 yards. And that isn't going to win you many football games. It's going to win you any football game. Travis Price brings the play in from Spike Dykes. Price, you might remember, was a backup quarterback on this team. The third team quarterback in 1985, now a wide receiver. Missed most of last year with a hamstring and was granted a redshirt season. That's what this is. Again, not close. It was intended for Price, and Billy Joe just fired it high. Chris Coombs put some pressure on, kind of a safety blitz, and it's fourth down. And the 63,000-plus who showed up at Kyle Field today have gotten what they came for. An erasure of some of that embarrassment. Whoa! 
made it. And they got the first down. You should have watched the uh, putter because Simmons can carry it on the face very well. Simmons. Now look at, look at Simmons. He makes it look like, oh, it's over my head. Watch Simmons with the fake like the snap's high. <laughs> <laughs> and he's running back to pick it up. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, it's a good acting job. It sure was. First down. And there's, there's the man who liked that. John Roper is uh, back in. Back in. Game's not over, John. Isaac Garrett, who is normally a lot and who carried it on that fake. It's first and ten. Oliver out of the pocket is sacked again. This time by Booper Cole, Leon Cole, with his third sack of the game. That is sack number seven, and the negative yardage from sacks now goes to 71 yards lost on seven sacks. And so many of them have happened on first down, either no, no gain on the run or this on the pass. One of Tolliver's weaker points of his game is he doesn't have much foot speed. No. He's got a fine arm, throws the ball well, and when protected, does a good job but he isn't much of a scramble. Draw play, Sheffield. And he's dropped. First man to get to him was linebacker Joe Johnson with help from Basil Jackson. Joe back up in behind Dana Batiste. Here comes the first team back in. He was a high school teammate of Alonzo Highsmith. There's Spike Dykes. Morris back into the Aggie defense. Roper back in. Now we got six defensive backs in the game. Let's see. I think they expect a pass, Norm. I think they're right. Here's the pass. Tapped it. Intercepted. That's Chris true. Coombs, and he lost the 45 to about the 43 yard line. Crooms, the freshman red shirt from Baytown Lee on the tip. And, of course, when you're a quarterback and you see your ball tip, the, your, your heart goes into your throat because those get intercepted. Tell you what, for poor Billy Joe Tolliver, there's no room around his throat. The Aggies have had that area staked out all day. This has not been a banner game for Tolliver. But if you've not seen Tolliver before, Gray, Ferris, Walker, Anderson, Thurman, they will wreak some havoc yet in this conference. Uh, this is a, the impressive thing about this A&M game is, this is not chopped liver they're beating up today. This is a pretty good football team. Uh, the team, however, that is following the form of last year, following a good game with a bad game. Inconsistency, that killed Tech last season, and it's doing it again, it appears. And a poor traveler. They have not won on the road since 1986. McAfee and Wilson, the running backs. Richardson on the keep struggles forward to about the 37-yard line. You know, Spike Dykes talked about that. Jeff Carter making the tackle. He, he remembers last year, they big win over Texas A&M and then got crushed by Arkansas. Flag down. Probably motion, but we'll see. You know, the wonderful thing for the Aggies here is there's 10 minutes left in this game. That's also the terrible thing for Tech. But the Aggies can have some fun now. Offense. First down. They can play the McAfee's, the Richardson's, the Wilson's, and the Simmons. They can play the backup linemen who desperately need some time to get them ready for next year and the year after when they're going to have to be the starters here. Games like this are wonderful for coaches. One thing you don't want to play are the guys that uh, you don't want to play all year. You know, the ones that you want to save for red shirts. You don't want to accidentally get them in the game. <laughs> There's a pitch back. McAfee, he's got some room. He's got... Horton in front laying a block down, and he gets up to about the 30-yard line. McAfee with the first down run of about 15 or 16 yards. Sammy Walker finally knocked him out of bounds as he just had the angle. On first and 15, the Aggies get 16 on what looked like a simple pitch. But McAfee cuts inside the defensive back, Cowan, who was coming and got blocked down. But now, see, Cowan is the guy who would have filled that lane downfield. When he rushes, McAfee just turns up and he gets big yards. Sugarland Willow Ridge, McAfee's high school, as the pitch comes to Horton. Look out. Horton first down. Horton out of bounds at the. 
No, they're going to call it way back upfield. Let's see. Are they? Let me see. I'm trying to find the... Oh, yeah. Back at about the 14-yard line. The official right on the goal line was calling him out, but he'd already gone out about. Keith McAfee with a good block helped spring him, and I think that fellow's got problems. Yeah. I think that camera's through shooting for the day. Ooh. <laughs> Look at Horton get around. What a block that by was, McAfee. Yeah, McAfee's block, and then right there, he's out of bounds. Now watch Horton take care of some cable here. Ew. Oh, there goes the ENG unit. The highlights are finished. Well, a game 43-7. to seven. He doesn't need to shoot anymore. Right up the middle down to the nine-yard line, Horton. Matt Wingo out of Pasadena Doby with the... Tech wants to redshirt their entire freshman class if they can. That's you know the, an ideal that a lot of teams have. You know the only Tech freshman that might play this year? Guy with a terrific name. He's six foot four, 305 pounds, and his name is Biggers. Charlie Biggers. Richardson, touchdown. Do we see any flag? Yes. And it's against the Aggies. Yeah. Timing was off. I couldn't find it. It's right on the right on the yard marker. Maybe offsides tech. There certainly was some motion in the line. <laughs> Jackie Sherrill says, touchdown. Touchdown. Offside. Defense. Defense. And he's right. That's why he's a coach. My goodness, this game is now going to be in the 50s. that it's going to reach 50 is maybe not terribly surprising. Uh, you kind of thought Tech would have scored more than they have, though. Six yards, two touchdowns for Bucky Richardson, who I guess maybe now with the pressure off of being the so-called second quarterback, <laughs> he's getting it done. There's the extra. It is good. You know, Greg, we talked beforehand there might be 60 or 70 points scored in this game. We didn't expect one team to get virtually all of them. So at the scoreboard check, we see the Aggies have jumped to a 50-7 to lead with the clock reading 8 minutes and 40 seconds in the ball game, and we'll be back in just a moment. From the Dome, and that should be an interesting battle, to be sure, based on the way things have gone so far this season. Is tackled by Gary Sorbell, and the Red Raiders will have the football for the first time. In, Irvin. In three previous games, Tech allowed 511 yards total on the ground. With over eight minutes to go in this one, they've allowed 388 to the top six Aggie rushers. Quarterback change now for Tech, several changes. We'll catch them here in a moment. First of all, with the carry for Texas Tech was Anthony Lynn. The quarterback is now Jamie Gill. Basil Jackson with the tackle. And let's see what else. I'm sure there's some several changes on the line, too. We see Webb in there. We see, well, not so many changes on the line, but the backfield. Anderson is out wide. There's Gill in the option plays. He cuts inside, runs it. Wow, bang, bang, bang. Big uh, number 99, Joe Johnson and Chris Coombs teaming on the tackle as Gill out of Hurst Bell is initiated. Played for Tim Edwards. Remember the guy that was one of the finalists for the SMU coaching job? He's coaching it. L.D. Bell. Gill got past the first man, but not Mr. Johnson and Mr. Coombs. Third down and five. Trips right. Now motion balances the offense. Up the middle, uh, scooped up. Did he catch it or trap it? Nope, did not catch it. It was bounced, according to the officials. Anthony McDowell says, uh-uh, wait a minute. But he doesn't. It's what they say that counts. And it's fourth down. Whether well, that... he's determined that he caught it, but tell you what, no whether avail. that ball hit the ground or not, that was a fabulous <laughs> catch. Officially, it's simply time to punt with fourth down. I don't believe it. John Roper's on the punt clock team for A&M. He's on the field again. There may have been some, yeah, flags tried to get the ball, didn't get it. 
There was nobody back to return it. They just wanted to block it. And it goes out of bounds. Okay, now I wonder about that a little bit more. You're ahead 50 to 7. 7-11 seven, to go. And you just decide you're going to go... Uh, after the kicker. I wonder if uh, Jackie and Spike don't like each other. Well, this is the kind of spot where you, you kind of figure somebody calls off the dogs. <laughs> but, you know, nobody called off the dogs on A&M. And, again, Tech may be pay, paying for the, for the beatings that A&M has gotten to start this season. Offside. Offside. Well, both teams. That's interesting. Wow, that is an interesting line call. Must, scrimmage, line of scrimmage must have been crooked. Uh, I see what happened here. Greg, what happened there was A&M didn't really get their full punt receiving team on. They got caught with nobody back deep. It really wasn't a punt block. A&M just got caught thinking Tech was going to go for it. That would, that would certainly uh, make sense because there was nobody back, and I didn't count players, but everyone was on the line of scrimmage. Now they've changed the call. Now it's not offsetting offsides. It's only offsides against the Aggies. There's our crowd here at Kyle Field, and it's the first opportunity for the fans here to see football. Let's see. They don't believe, I don't believe they have a night game scheduled now, so they'll save on the electric bill. With the Alabama game moved to December, unless they move, well, they may play that at night. They will for television. There's a short game, to say the least. Anthony Lynn, number 22. By the way, Alabama rallied today from being down 17 points and beat Kentucky 31-27. Meanwhile, TCU got slaughtered in the hills of Arkansas. Woo! That is a... That would have been an interesting battle, but uh, it turned out to not be any more than this one. 50-7, to Texas A&M. The Baylor-Houston game had some thrills and chills, of course. Second down and 10. Gill out of the pocket. McDowell first down and finally banged out of bounds by Coombs. But a good game. Now what we've seen here with Gill is his mobility. He, he threw that ball well, but he also was able to buy the extra time with the quicker feet. This youngster McDowell's looked pretty good at times in this game. Out of Colleen, Texas, just a freshman red shirt. And Gill, also a freshman red shirt. Barely cleared the fingertips of Lafayette Turner. 6.27 to play. Thurman in motion. On the draw. Lynn. He's got room. And Lynn almost broke that one. Chris Coombs finally making the tackle. Lynn has shown some speed, too. That kid's going to be a fine player, that Anthony Lynn. Lots of people wanted him out of high school. He's from Salina, Texas. That's up around Frisco and Prosper and places like that. Frisco, the home of the fighting coons. The big city, 6'3", 205 pounds. So he's got some good size to go with the speed. Huh? And he's going to score it for six. Anthony so they're Lynn. dancing in the hometown as Lynn scores the touchdown. And that is his first of his career. He is big. He's got some nice speed. And were this club not blessed with the presence of Irvin Ferris and James Gray, Lynn would be getting a lot of playing time. But he's stuck behind Gray, who's a terrific player. Going for two. Gill, he's got room to run that in. A one-on-one. -on -one. Does. Nice move by Gill as he was in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It was he, the goal line, and Alex Morris, and he knew he didn't have to get far, and he got far enough. So that makes the score 50 to 15. And before we have the kickoff, let us take a timeout. With six minutes and three seconds remaining in the ball game, the Aggies have it well in hand. We'll be back. Good afternoon. Can you imagine how many times these women have been kissed today? <laughs> the lips are chapped. Do two-point conversions and extra points count? I think that there are guys down there that anything can. They count first down. I'm telling you, 50, 50 points constitutes a three-hour makeout <laughs> when you really come right down to it, doesn't it? Yeah, what you do here is you get a girl who doesn't think about football, and <laughs> you tell her your own rules. Oh, that's a score. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the short kick is going to be recovered by the Yankees, and they have a chance to score some more. Shane Garrett stopped on that one. This series began in 1927. The Aggies lead it 25-20-1, but the Raiders, a slight edge in Southwest Conference encounters, 15-12-1, and, and Tech had an edge here, but uh, that's going to be even after this game. It's going to be 8-8-1 and one at Kyle Field. You know, one of the problems for Jackie Sherrill is even if he wants to take the foot off the throat of an opponent, it's hard. He's so deep in his skill positions. Yeah, but all he can do is with play calls. He can't do it with players. He's got great players, and I think that's just another one. McAfee as he loses his helmet but gains the yardage. Boyd Cowan and Dal Watson. Dal Watson is an Odessa Permian vet who uh, plays linebacker for Tech. Considered an overachiever, just one of these tough, gritty, hard-nosed kids. Coming down wide to the left is Cornelius Patterson now, number 14. And the pitch back to McAfee is fumbled, and I think, did he get to it? I think he got to it. By the way, Tech is going to feel very badly about giving up 50 points today, but they're not even close to the worst defenses in America today. Wisconsin's yielded 62 to Michigan, and the game isn't over. And New Mexico's yielded 63 to Air Force, and that game isn't over. Well, McAfee does yeah, a nice job hustling back on that, doesn't he? New Mexico has a few problems. <laughs> Third down in 14. And McAfee is dragged down after a gain of four. Mike Derryberry with the tackle, the El Paso high schooler. And now it will be fourth down. Clock ticking, mercifully, as far as Tech fans are concerned. Four minutes and 30 seconds. I don't believe a and going to punt here. This looks like fourth and ten. Just play it out. Richardson looks to the sidelines and... There will be no punt team. Yes, there will be a punt team coming on. Here comes Sean Wilson. Taking their time. Clock ticking at 4.08. Four seconds. They're not going to get the punt away before they get penalized, I think. Nope. Delay of game. Well, this doesn't really bother them because, quite honestly, Wilson's probably better off punting 45. He can just let it all hang out from the 50. So he'll move back five. Just makes a worse shot for our camera with the uh, extra shadows. That's all. They should have thought of that. Sean Wilson's averaging 39 and a half in this uh, game. Which is a little under his season average of 42-4. Here's the kick. High. And Thurman takes it, fair catch at the 12. And there you take a look at, again, some more of the fans. This game has been uh, lacking in drama after the Aggies took charge in the first quarter. They led just 7 to nothing after one, but it was 22 to nothing half, and nothing really changed in the second half. Texas Tech has scored a couple of touchdowns, but not pressure touchdowns. Gill stays in at quarterback. Jamie, 6'2", 200 pounds. And he wants to use his time wisely here. He has engineered a touchdown drive. Lynn. And Lynn gets across the 15 to about the 16 or so, a gain of perhaps three. Basil Jackson and Joe Johnson. Darren Lewis finished for the day. We'll see if we can't get Lewis's final totals because uh, while he did not reach 194 yards, 167, which is his... Second best game? Uh, it's one le yard less than last week. 168 Ooh. last what? week. No, 177, they're saying. Oh, okay, so that's 177, so that is his second best game. Yep, second 168 only to... last week. Lynn again. Flag. Lynn is stopped just a little short of the first down, it appears. Tony Jones with the tackle. Two flags on the play. Second one may be for unintentional face mask.
There's Joe Thomas again coming over after conferring with his buddies. <laughs> Holy! That's the first Offense. one. Offense! Place minus! Defense! Offsetting! Still second down! <laughs> Had a few of those. There it is. Yep. Well, it slid off, but that's what they called. And then when they saw the head, the head turned to the right. They knew it had had an effect. So, you know, ball. that's that's one penalty you don't mind them calling very tightly, because even though it's inadvertent, you can really hurt somebody grabbing that face mask. Second down and seven. Two minutes and 48 seconds remaining. And Lynn gets maybe a yard. Yeah, but he'll remember the hit for a while, won't he? <laughs> Joe Johnson was one of them that laid him down. Joe is from Navarro Junior College out of Miami, Florida. Well, this is a whack. Bang. Hello, Anthony. Well, that's how they draw it up on the blackboard. Wrap your leg, your arms around the legs. Joe out of Miami, a high school teammate of Alonzo Highsmith later of the University of Miami and now the Houston Oilers. It is a third down and five. Aggie Crowd wants the ball back one more time. And a clock expires. <laughs> and if you were listening, our field mic caught someone on the tech side. Wasn't happy about it. Uh-uh. Oh. Delay. Delay. Offense. Oh. 25, 25 seconds. Count. Count. 2.05 remaining. Aggie's about to go one and four, but more important, one and O oh in the Southwest Conference, and a convincing one and O oh in the Southwest Conference. Amen, brother. Whoa! Incomplete. What a defensive time play by Chris Crooms, as he just about tore Anthony McDowell and the football apart at the same time. Hey, Crooms, who plays behind uh, William Thomas, has uh, scored some defensive points here. You see the pass was a little bit behind the intended receiver. Here, here's one thing I'd question right here. Rod Harris, who's incredibly valuable to this Aggie team, is back in punt receiving. Boy, you, you just sort of cross your fingers and hold your breath that Harris doesn't get hurt in a situation Not like this. Not fair catching either. Well, that was a gentle tackle at about the 48-yard line. Boyd Cowan got him. Boyd, who had a key interception against AM last year to kind of help wrap up that victory, has only been helping mop up defensively in this one. And we're going to get a new quarterback, Lance Pavlis, on for the Aggies. This is a, you know, for a guy like Lance, he's saying, golly, I don't, you know, I'm a passer. I'm in a situation where you don't throw. Ordinarily, <laughs> 50 to 15 to score. a &M on top. Minute and 35. That's three running plays for the Aggies, and this will be over. What a player this young man was at Tom Ball. An outrageously successful passer. There's Bucky Richardson, who had a good game today. In fact, he and Chris Osgood both did a good job during the work uh, in the gut of the game. McAfee as he gains about six. Last year, Tech's win was against AM was the only Southwest Conference defeat of uh, the Aggies. A couple of long scoring plays, uh, the big story, and then the steady play of Irvin Ferris. Ferris injured early has not been a factor in this game, but to be quite honest, at the point when he was hurt, things were already going the wrong direction as far as Tech was concerned. Second and four. Same man, McAfee. McAfee breaks loose at the 30 down to about the 26 or 7 yard line. Out of bounds. And that puts the Aggies over 400 yards rushing for the day. And it gives the Aggies a fifth runner who's gained at least 30 yards in this game. Look at that stiff arm. Wow. Gary Kostar and McAfee. Kostar is yet another tight end. He's lined up at the fullback spot. Pavlis shows that he can run the football and a flag. Clock stops with 50 seconds. You know,
know, if you're Jackie Sherrill, you probably don't want to score here. Injured player is Dave McFarland for Tech. You probably don't want to score. You've been on the other sideline in your lifetime. But how do you tell Pavlis? How do you tell the Kitty McAfee, the running back, hey, don't go in the end zone with the ball if you get a chance? No, all you can do is just uh, put your, your backup players in and just let them play. I think then you've done your your job. Rushing yards in this game. Look at this total, Norm. Holy cow. Not close. That's rushing yards. That's not counting. The Aggies have thrown the ball a little. They haven't thrown it a lot, but uh, they've thrown it a little bit. And there's the Texas Tech Red Raider sideline. It will be a long trip back. 50 seconds remaining as we continue with the injured player McFarland on the field. I think it was like head on head if it appeared to me. Let's check it. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're walking the penalty off against the Aggies. This is McDowell. No, McAfee. Or McAfee, rather, and his running style, which uh, <laughs> shows the cupboard is not bare with running backs. Well, you know, understand what we're talking about here with McAfee as they treat the injured player. Understand what type of a player we're talking about being the third team tailback at AM. McAfee. Redshirted in 86. He's a freshman redshirt. 22 touchdowns his senior year. That time they were keying on him and uh, blocked by Costar couldn't spring him. Tim Eskew making the tackle. And the clock ticking at 25 seconds. And actually uh, with 20 seconds and 22, they do not have to get the playoff if they don't want. Hey, when you're a third teamer, you have <laughs> to get the playoff. Believe me. <laughs> this is what you live for. Last play of the game. And they give it to Costar, and Costar gets across the 35-yard line as the clock winds down. Members of the Corps of Cadets race out onto the field as the two coaches will meet in midfield. Jackie Sherrill picking up his first win of the season. His record now at AM goes to one and three, and that is exactly the same record with Texas Tech. The big difference is Tech one and one in conference play, and Texas AM now one and oh. The final score again, Texas AM 50, Texas Tech 15. We'll be back with some final thoughts from Kyle Field in just a moment. 